Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I am so excited to have on a 39-year-old from Stratford, Ontario, who once had a record of 25 wins, two losses, and three ties. And in the playoffs to the Cherry Cup, 12 wins, one loss, and a 940 save percentage two-time Cherry Cup champion, a one-time Sutherland Cup champion, a CHA champion with the Purple Eagles of Niagara, a perennial runner-up in our ping-pong league in Elmira, once crushed Dave Hardy's testicle in a soccer match, and is the first professional defenseman and goalie on the podcast. Welcome to the podcast, Jeff Van Nyenatten. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks, Wally. Thanks for having me. Buddy, I've been so excited. I haven't seen you since Andrew Lackner's Stag and Doe. That's a while. I think he just told me they were having their 10-year anniversary. So it's, yeah, 10 years? Yikes. Yeah, so. That's well, let's a, catch up. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> so, how we know each other is we played three years together for the Elmira Sugar Kings, right? That's correct. All three years together. So, we were rookies together right through to the end, eh? That's right. Um, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, uh, you know, elaborate a little more sometimes. Okay. Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. Where do you, uh, where do you want to start? Um, uh, I, I think uh, we'll get, we'll get deep into Elmira later, but, um, really you're going to skip Elmira. No, not, no, we're, we're going to get deeper, you know, deeper oh. later, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. um, we did discuss, um, Niagara against western michigan um yep. we, all, we also know each other that way so it was three right. years in elmira and then we also battled in university a bit didn't we you want me to um to tell the listeners your stats because i took the time the other day to pull up your stats versus niagara okay because you were popping your mouth off and you scored a bunch of goals on me so let's just start there and get it out of the way okay okay so i got um freshman year we go to Western Michigan and lose 7-3, Brent Walton, two goals. I was injured, high ankle sprain, like the week before, day before. Pulled the uh, shoe, probably. Couldn't, hand, couldn't handle the stress. Yeah, have you ever had a high ankle sprain, dude? It was, I would, you'd rather have a broken leg at that point. So okay. the two other Niagara goalies go and get lit up by Brent Walton for two <laughs> goals. Sophomore year, um, we go there for two times. I play game one, Wally gets two assists, no goals, no goals. Oh, I make 29 saves in a 3-2 <laughs> loss. And then for some reason, coach puts in uh, the other goalie the next but, night. Really? 3-2, and you have no goals, no points in that one. Okay. Junior year, uh, played you twice. Lost 4-3, lost 4-1 in Western Michigan. Friday night, Wally with a goal and two assists. Saturday night, Wally with a goal and assist. I'm suspended that weekend. There was an incident on the Wednesday night. Um, we went out, had a few ales, and didn't make the trip. We'll get into that later, I guess. Um, and then senior year, uh, Western Michigan, finally, after three straight years of us going to Lawson Arena, the Lawson Lunatics, finally Western Michigan comes to little old Dwyer, take on the perps. <laughs> and we take you down three to two you did score though so you did score a goal on me um and i made 34 saves in the win <laughs> okay. but if you want to be known as the purple eagle killer i got you down for six games five goals five assists you want to be the purple eagle killer mm. you're the purple eagle killer. no I, I i was more worried about scoring on you than the purple eagles but oh, well, <laughs> yours I could have sworn I had a couple on you, but uh, you know what? You're thorough. You know, you were thorough um, before the Sugar King Zoom meeting with all your stats and helping the boys out remember everything. Because, yeah. man, uh, you, you ha you, you've you really kept up with you, the stats, eh? Well, you know what? It's, uh, Mom had a scrapbook every year and every article, every game, it was all there, man. And then so when the 20 year anniversary came around, I just started digging into it one day and I'm like, got to get the boys back together right and because of course covid we can't actually have a real a real party but uh the next closest thing was that twitter account i started um and uh just relived every single game on the day it happened 20 years ago that was and you doing did, that that was me yeah that was <laughs> who else who else would it <laughs> no be? I, yeah. of course it was me <laughs> um 
but mom had every article every game and uh it was unreal man Did she, like she, i'm pretty sure she used to not watch the games she would no, watch she, it from the bathroom correct yeah she would hide in the bathroom yeah that for sure yeah i remember that playoff drive in, dad said she'd just stay in the parking lot sometimes or she would try to get like close to the arena so she could hear hear you know who was scoring and you know it was, it was a lot of stress my mom when we when we started um Going over the 20 year thing, she came in the uh, the shop here and I had all the books out on the pool table and uh, she looks around at them and she goes, huh, I was 40 that year. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm 39. Like, I can't imagine. Could you imagine having an 18, 19 year old son playing junior B hockey every weekend for the Solid Cup and us like going to watch? Like, that's my kid. No. Like, wow, that was mind blowing to me that she was 40. And that was going on. I was like, wow. I, it is mind blowing how old we are now and that it was 20 years ago. Cause geez, yeah. you look the exact same, Jeff. I know. Thanks buddy. Oh, you the look lighting great. in here. I think. No, oh, you just look healthy. You do. You look yeah. healthy. Um, great to see you. But the other ways we know each other is I would say of all the years I played hockey, I never, ever warmed up for games like I did with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got intense there with the soccer and, uh, you know, we kept doing it in uh, in college and pro too, like the keep up, but never actual games. Like we were playing two on two. You, me oh. versus Hog Lackner, or whatever the teams were, it was two on two, wasn't it? Two, two on two or three on three, soccer. but there were like, yeah, yeah. there was a little opening that was the net. And then at the other end, there was, yeah, an eavesdrop and that was the net. And there yeah. were concrete walls and like, yeah. we were. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. No, we were, it was full battles, like, and um, you did pop, you did pop a guy's testicle, eh? Like, Dude, I remember, I remember that story, if you want to start with that story, like, we're doing our thing, and it was, I was doing a, it wasn't in a soccer game, I was doing, like, a basketball move, I was pretending to, like, back him in, like, a center, back a guy up, you know, and somehow, I turned, and, like, did a fake, and just elbow right in the nuts, and I was like, I didn't think nothing of it, right? Carried on with my warm up, and uh, and then before the game, like we're going out for warm up, and Hardy's not there; he's not dressed. And I'm kind of going on the ice, and and the guy Hardy is, he didn't want to like make a scene that his his testicle had ruptured, and uh, he couldn't play. And it was, I think, it was in the first round. It was against Kitchener because going through stats, that's the only game of the playoffs he missed. I think was one game in that series, so it must yeah, have healed up well then. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I guess, you know, but, <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I felt so bad, but you know what, fuck, what a, what a, what a tough fucker he was too. And he, he was, his thing was, he didn't want like anyone to know, or especially me. So he like played it off. Like, oh no, it's no big deal. <laughs> like you're just fucking elbowed you in the balls and you're missing a playoff game. Kind of a big deal, but uh, you know, what a fucking trooper. Uh, great, great fucking dude. Jeez, that's a lot of F-bombs. Hey, you might break the record tonight. Holy Sorry. moly. Hey, no, it's okay. Without, I can't speak without swearing. So. No, you're allowed to. Um, okay. So the other ways we know each other, which that's great, you know, like those stories. But I would say the testicle is one thing I had kind of forgot about. I gets reminded me um, yeah. during his pod episode five, folks. But um, well, the one I remember was, geez, we, were, we would have been close to playing for the trophies. Like we were close to the Sutherland Cup. And uh, I think this was our last year. Maybe not. Maybe our second last year. But I thought Adam Hogg was the captain at this point and like one of our top players. And you, uh, you like it was it was in a competitive game and we were playing to win. I think the games went up to three or five and it, it got yeah. very, very physical. And Absolutely. you um, hit our captain from behind into a concrete wall. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that happened for sure. And he was <laughs> fine. He was fine. <laughs> You know, I, I can remember another story at Niagara. We were doing uh, fitness testing and I'm going like a, they put some tape on the line. You got to go side to side. And I, and I fucked it all up. I couldn't do it. I embarrassed myself. And I sit back beside Brian Mills in my stall and Mills, he looks over and laughs at me, laughed in my face. I grabbed a puck and threw it at his face. Just, and then he's kind of like, what the fuck, man? You, know, you threw a puck at his face? Threw a puck at his face for laughing at me, you know, <laughs> I wound up a little tighter back then. And Wally and, uh, you know, Jeez, good times. Um, I mean, you know, they're competitive times, right? Um, yeah, I, I don't think you've changed much because I, I haven't heard much of you in the last few years, but I I have met a few people that like were like, oh, you know him. I played mm -hmm. 
men's league against him and he's an absolute nightmare out there. So I don't mm-hmm. think you've changed. No, I like to win Wally. There's no secret to that. And, uh, and more than that, I had loser. I'm a sore loser. I can't take losing. And that hasn't changed much either. So. No, I, I, I don't think that changes in us, um, which, and I guess that does bring up my big news for today. Um, Cause I, I, I did work really hard at trying to get this by pumping out a bunch of guys that played in the UK for a good two weeks. There is that today uh, it finally happened. I was number one in the UK for trending podcast. So um, uh, yeah, that was cheers, buddy. Cheers, congrats. Yeah. And it's all because of beauties like you coming on and uh, the stories you guys have is uh, like, it's great having great friends. <laughs> hey man, you're happy. You love what you're doing. That's, that's oh. always great to see. No, man. And that's, and winning feels good, right? Even if you got to pump out five a week, you got to, you got to try and be number one and uh, we, do the work. We, do the work. Yeah. And we did that when we were with the Sugar Kings, whether it was before the game, during the game, after the yep. game, we were always playing to win. I got down the other reasons we knew each other were ping pong, risk, shuffleboard, darts, crib. I said crib, maybe euchre. Um, and uh, for some reason, whether we were playing any of those games, you would be sweating profusely. You would be very, very smelly of body odor. And um, you would be in your underwear any yeah. every time. Well, it was fucking obviously smoking hot in your basement. I don't know if, uh, what's your parents' You're... name? Ron and uh, Sue. What's your mom's name? Sue. Ron and Sue must have not been paying the fucking air conditioning bills. It's so hot down there. F-bombs, man. You know? Holy and, moly. And, uh, so we're playing like competitive ping pong. Uh you know, yeah, you're going to get hot. Some guys are going to take their, take their shirts off. Right. And, uh, and what about when you're playing risk, why do you got to be like in your get sweaty playing risk? Or is that just, you just intimidation? Um, you know, (laughs) sometimes guys don't want to play sports against someone who's sweating all over the place and wants it more than them. Right. So, well, you definitely want it more than most, but like, I would say, like, I don't like you rubbing up against me when you're sweaty and smelly and like, Oh, when we would play those ping pong games, man, like the whole basement, but yeah. like, um, so that, I guess, I guess we're into this now is, uh, yeah. I'm is, sweating is, already. I'm still a sweater Wally. And, uh, oh, I, my God, you know, you're going to see a few of those. I'm going to try to limit them, but it's hot in here and, and I'm a sweater. I, uh, I used to lose seven yeah. pounds at a practice in college. They make us way in, way out and seven pounds gone in one yeah. practice. Yeah. Oh yeah. It would take me months to lose seven pounds. I know. Without any carbs or nothing, man. Anything that swims, runs, or flies, right? Um, but um, so speaking of your smell, right? I can't imagine it has improved much because where and what are you doing now? Um, well, you know what? At, at Niagara, uh, Lackner kind of took me under his wing and he taught me how to use deodorant. And he, he didn't think I was putting enough on, but he would walk. Well, I mean, make sure I would do like three or four swipes under each armpit. And then I would try to like duck out early. I was like his little kid, you know, like he was, he was my dad who was a year younger than me, but he took me under his wing. Um, and, uh, so now I'm a pig farmer and a chicken farmer and I still, I probably don't smell great, but I have, I wear deodorant and I wear a lot of ax. So maybe too much ax, some people say, but, uh, I smell great that way. And, uh, yeah, pigs and chickens are my game now, buddy farming. Well, that's good. You can, you can now blame the smell on the pigs and chicken, right? Yeah. Cause it, it, you got ax on now. So it's not you, it's not yeah. you, it's the pigs and chicken. So, that's right. um, and you do have kids now, right? That's right. I got three kids, Jace, Blake, they are eight, six, and three. And you married your high school sweetheart that, uh, when we were running in a muck around, uh, town, that was your gal back then too, right? Yeah, so when I first uh, signed Omar, I moved into a billet, uh, a billet place now, Randy and Lori Martin, great people. Me and Nigel moved in and started going to Bluevale for high school, and less than a month later, maybe like two weeks in, saw this cute little filly sitting out over there, and uh, she had super short hair at the time, and I don't know why, but I was into it, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we hit it off, and um, you know. You moved her out. You moved her out to the farm, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. a couple so of kids a... that fell in love. That's right. Yeah. It's one of those uh, sweetheart stories. One in a million. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. I'm glad to have known you guys when you were meeting there. That's just beautiful. Um, Didn't you used to call her the lovely Leah, I believe. Um, Where's the lovely Leah tonight, Jeff? 
maybe <laughs> you have a great memory way better than me so um we've spoke of your smell so any issues with hair growth at this age um yeah it's in all the wrong places you know so there's none up top and there's a shitload everywhere else <laughs> so that's where i'm at right now next yeah. question okay well, we better move on from that one but i was curious because we haven't really had I don't know if we've had a farmer on yet. So can you run us through a typical day um, for the Dutch out? Uh, and where are you in Stratford? No, it's um, closer to uh, Bornholm between Mitchell and Moncton. Um, so Ontario minutes, folks. Yeah. 20 minutes from Stratford, 20 minutes to Listow. I'm right in the middle. Okay. And, so uh, typical day. Typical day. Uh, what did I do today? Today? What did I do? Um, well, first I had to go uh, check on the chicken. So I just got chickens in and uh, basically the routine there is just go pick up the dead ones, monitor the monitor the temperature and the, um, and the mortality. So that, that doesn't take very long early on, like 15 minutes, check chickens. Then I had to go load, uh, load some wheat for my dad. He was busy doing something else. He was shipping pigs. So he, can you load this wheat for me? Yep, go play with some tractors and load some wheat. And uh, then I went back home and I had to vaccinate my pigs every week. I have to vaccinate uh, 400 pigs. So I get my brother-in-law over, Chug, uh, and uh, he helps me vaccinate pigs. So we got that done. And then, uh, then I had to ship pigs. So pigs, pigs are coming and going every week on my farm. So then uh, the guy comes, I load the uh, pigs. And then, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it for the day. Went, jumped in the pool and just been prepping for this. Oh, geez. So, oh, and you have a pool too. That sounds lovely. And I really like to oh, yeah. bring, I'd really like to bring family out to the farm. Um, I think it's time for us to see each other in person. I know we were supposed to golf tomorrow, but um, I have to work. Um, so Great. sorry. No problem. But we got to make that happen. I'd like, like the family to come out and meet your family, you know, like, uh, geez, we spent a lot of time together there and it's weird how you just go your separate ways and you really aren't that far away anymore. No, especially now we got a trailer up in your neck of the woods. We got a trailer, Fisherman's Cove. So we're up there all the time. That's just a hop, skip, and a jump. So I got to come over and uh, I got to pick up my hat uh, next week. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of us being in the area, this is going to be a uh, Captain Ronnie. And uh, that brings up one of my sponsors, the Bayfield Brewing Company. And we could meet in Bayfield for a few. We could even sure. invite some more dandies, some other potters, and uh, meet up for a luncheon, you know, a luncheon learn. Sounds lovely. Okay. So um, moving on is we got into where and what are you doing now in a typical day? That, um, it sounds interesting. Um, the vaccinating 200 pigs, um, what are you vaccinating them for? 400 pigs. Uh, 400. Just common, common pig uh, diseases. Uh, Circle, Michael, and Purs. Um, you just do it every week. 400 come in, you needle them the next day, and uh, away she goes. Okay, fair enough. Don't know anything about that world, really. Um, no. well, so, it's like you know, like COVID, right? You get these vaccines, and they save lives. Absolutely. So, minor hockey to the Elmira Sugar Kings. Okay, um, start out Stratford. Uh, major novice we win everything it's my first year playing travel hockey first year playing hockey in Stratford before then I played uh, house league in Mitchell and they cut me as a as a defenseman then I asked can I come back out and play goalie and they cut me again as a goalie so then I went to uh, house league for the year played goalie and uh, I think I won MVP of my team in minor novice so I thought I was I was a great goalie so then the next year in Stratford um, some buddy of of, uh, of my mom I think said hey they only have one goalie for the 82 major novices uh your son plays goalie so I went out and uh yeah we were unbelievable that year we had uh we had a couple guys that were that made junior b and stuff and uh so yeah we dominated it was a great great year and then after that some of those guys moved up to triple a or moved up in age group and for the next four years we sucked Adam and Pewey you just got lit up and I was getting seen a lot of rubber and I was getting better. I was improving. And then I started playing uh, summer hockey, triple a up in uh, Durham, soggy and city platers. And that was kind of my first introduction to actually good, uh, good hockey. Mike Jarmuth, uh, he lived near here and he played up there. And uh, so that was my first time playing with him and uh, playing against the best, right? Playing against the best 82s. And that's when you start to think, okay, maybe I can, 
made, you're trying to get to the OHL really, right? So then uh, made the jump to um, AAA in Waterloo and minor Bantam and then played, uh, played minor Bantam and major Bantam. We had decent teams, but just couldn't in the playoffs, right? So didn't have, uh, didn't get, doesn't get on any kind of draft lists and stuff and just uh, opportunities there really to, to kind of set yourself up as one of the better goalies, right? So I was kind of just another guy playing triple A and then uh, there was no junior B offers um, after major Bantam. Uh, so I had to go back and play minor midget triple A, which, you know, it, we had a good team and I had a good year, but it didn't get me drafted. So I got drafted in the 14th round by the Rangers and uh, that was fine, though, because I thought, OK, now I'm ready to go play for uh, the Colletons. Right. And uh, and they kind of made uh, made a promise in the summer that I was going to be the guy. And then uh, I show up uh, to camp and didn't play well. And uh, and so they gassed me. And as you remember, it was, it was it was devastating, especially when you're a 17 year old kid. And uh, they dropped that bomb on you. And it's like, wow, you know, uh, especially when you thought you were going to be there. Yeah. You know, and I can remember at some point during camp, I was like, Hey, can I move my stuff in the room? And the guy was like, ah, not yet. I don't think <laughs> like, Oh God, I cringe now, but you know, I, I, I did it to myself. I didn't, I didn't play very good. And, uh, Del Gruna stage, uh, I was actually giving him rides to, uh, to camp cause he lived around the corner and he was, he was only 15. Right. So, uh, I was giving him rides and he outplayed me. And, uh, but I mean, at the same time, I think planning and just planning and didn't like me planning and he just, I rubbed him the wrong way and I rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but he was the guy in charge and he got it in his head, uh, that, uh, that he didn't like me. So, uh, that well, was it. it's, it's like my song. I'm not for everyone. I don't think you're for everyone either. Um, but uh, we also won a lot of games together, even if we're not for everyone, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, you know what? I, I went home and uh, was devastated. And it's also, this is kind of late, right? Like, I just went through a whole training camp. So, lots. there's not a whole bunch of spots left. And uh, I remember Kitchener called first because I guess I had just been drafted by the Rangers. So, the Dutchmen were like, well, yeah, we'll give them a look. I remember going out there first to practice. And there was four goalies out there. Navarro. Obermeyer and um, the other guy who actually played for Obermeyer, I think. But uh, I'm like, these guys, they're all older than me and probably better than me. So this ain't going to fucking work. So went home and then Elmira called, man. And uh, Kevin Block called and uh, said to come out. And I just remember looking at my dad in the kitchen like, fucking right. You know, like, Let's yeah, do Stratford this. is, Elmira had just come off, uh, you know, 96, 97, 97, 98. They, they took, they, they upset, uh, they shocked the world kind of, right. When they knocked out the Cullies every year, the Cullies were in some cup like, but Dietrich and Collins took them down both those years. And, uh, so then we're, we're only talking two years after that, really, that I'm like, okay, you know, and, and especially too, when I go to Kitchener, y'all didn't get any fans, Kitchener didn't get any fans, but me and my dad knew Elmira gets fucking fans. And, uh, so it was just, uh, it was just like, okay, here we go. And I went and uh, I just remember, I can remember the one of the first people I saw on the ice was Rod Bauman. And at that time he was probably six foot three, but pretty raw. Hey, eh? like not right. a, exactly a smooth skater. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> you know? And, uh, but I'm like, I don't care, whatever. And, um, and I remember Chris Puglisi taking one timers on, Hey, you take some extra shots after practice. Puglisi was probably the top scorer on the team at the time, hardest shot. And he had been on those, I think on the 96, 97 and 97, 98 teams. And no, uh, so, he never yeah. won. He came after. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, let's take some one timers. So Chris Puglisi is just hammering one timers at me from the face off dot, which is in Elmira is about 15 feet away. And I'm like, taking it. finally he catches me like right on the elbow and my, I thought he broke my fucking arm. I was okay. That's good. That's good. And uh, went up top and blocked. He said, uh, okay, we'll sign you. You're going to play 12 games this year. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> That's great. I'm in the league. And that and was you know, with uh, Tim Newton, right? Uh, real Newton dandy. Was, that uh, might have Newton to come on the lead guy. Someday. Yep. And uh, so I went in the room and they're like, you know, here's Nigel Hope. This guy's going to be your roommate. And Nigel said, you got a car? I'm like, yeah. At that time, I was rocking the Jimmy, right? So, you know what? It all of a sudden went from from uh, total devastation to, 
I'm back, you know? Uh, it was awesome. I, really I got to move away from home, move into a billet, and be the new guy at school. And I was like, this is cool. And we had an unreal team. We had a very good team. Uh, and then early on in the year, sure enough, I think, Within the first month, uh, Newtson, he, he was a wild man out there, right? He was, he oh, was, yeah. uh, he was a beast. He was a 20 year old and he took no shit. And uh, sure enough, he gets in a fight and he crossed the red line, automatic one game suspension. This is on a Sunday night. And the Dex team we're playing on Friday is Stratford in Stratford. So I had all week to just like, this is my Stanley Cup at that point. And I went in there and we shut him out. And the headline read, Benign Not in Returns to Haunt Culletons in the uh, in the Stratford newspaper. That, that, up to that point, it was a highlight of my life, really, right? And I Oh, felt that like, would feel what? so good to stick it to uh, them. Oh, yeah. And I wasn't done sticking it to them either. No, I think, we uh, stuck it to them a lot. We eh? stuck it to them. Yeah, we the... played them 20 times, I think. And, um, you know, I did some digging on those stats, too. And How'd you we do? Won, we won most of those. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right, and I'm sure if they could have a do-over, they might they might have kept you. Because oh, uh, I don't know. I, I it. honestly, it's like fate, though. That like I I like for us to be together all three years, and the three years we had together, and you have Eggets there, who comes from Concordon, where most people up here were going to the Owen Sound Grays, and he yeah. comes to Elmira and does it a little different. Same with Fisher as the captain. Like it was. Uh, I don't know. And then you have Hogger, Lackner, like, and Rodney, yeah. who was only there for a rookie year. And then he went to the OHL and won the uh, championship. Oh. But, like, what what a time we had for three years. Well, yeah, yeah too. And um, like when anybody here, we talk about the success we had for three years there. It all starts with the 83s right, from Elmira, right? Like, yourself, Lackner, uh, Hogg, uh, and then, too, Dennis Weidman and uh, Rod Bauman. They got five guys who played professional hockey, got scholarships, went to the O, uh, you know, like that, that's in a, a town of 10,000 people. Right. So yeah, that was uh, number one. That was, that was what set us up for success because that doesn't come around. That's a very rare thing. And then you had rank in 82. So there's another one, professional hockey um, and a scholarship. So that was what set us up for success and allowed us to just build around that. Right. You only need a, a few more pieces after you had that in place, which is, Probably one of the reasons why I ended up there too, because uh, I was an import, and uh, but Blocky had just brought in four local guys, so he, he had an extra import card kicking around. Oh, I might as well get a shot. Newton's graduating after this year. Get one goalie in place, and uh, I, I guarantee that's probably what his thought process was. So you know, it went, and we we grew together. And, uh, that first year, we had a really good team too, but. Uh, the step that uh, that especially you you and Hog made from year one to year two, and then from year two to year three, that was just monumental, right? Like, well, it, was, it, it really turned the tide. But at that age, man, when you're like for me, I was 15 when I started junior B and turning 16 in November, and then like you're playing against such big guys, and back then there was fighting, and I even tried to do it a few times just to fit in, and like. Like it was a totally different game. And like for the first year, I kind of was scared because I had never played against guys like that. And then after you're playing you get, against men, you're right, playing against like Brian, the Brian Clemmers of the world and Dale, Dale Weidman, Weidman's, Dale like Weidman, Darren but, Fishers, like these guys will run you over, run you right. the fuck over. And we're playing in a tiny little rink in Elmira. So I get through a year. And then after that, I get a little bigger, a little stronger. But once you get through a year and you're like, okay. I did it. <laughs> so then it was like, okay, now exactly. let's focus on actually playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I remember too, after that first, first shot, I had, uh, your internet sucking, eh? Mine is. Oh yeah. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay. Um, You're in a barn. I am. But, um, I remember, um, after that first year I had good numbers cause they, they sheltered me. I played Listowel five times and shut him out four times, I think, right? So I remember that first year, you had a ton of shutouts. Yeah, I fought five shutouts, I think. And I was 16 and four with like a 2.2 goals again. So I think, you know, newton has gone. I'm a man. I'm ready. They come to my house in the summer. Uh, Matthews, uh, I think Kipper was the other coach, Greg Snyder. And uh, they sit down in the... Uh, in the dining room table 
and uh, they tell me, well, we, uh, we signed this other kid. Uh, you just got drafted and uh, you're going to split with him. And I was just kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, I was like, what? Just I had a fucking great year. I'm ready. And uh, yeah. so as a goalie, that's the last thing you want to hear is like, it's a split. You know, you want to hear, hey, let the fucking better man win. You win, oh, you're in. Oh, like, and you, like the way me, the way we are, like in every sport we play or every game yeah. we play. Yeah. If you tell us it's already decided before you play the game, that's horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, anyways, I show up for year two, and uh, I already got a bit of a chip on my shoulder. But something that plagued me all the way through is I didn't have a very good training camp again, so I didn't get off on a great start. And we got Matthews running the show and. Actually, we started out that year good, but we played, we only played poor teams in the beginning. So we started out pretty good, but everyone kind of knew like this guy's different, right? With, uh, you know, the time, the stopwatch for shifts or for, remember when uh, we're in practice and he's got all these like tires and hoses and he's, he's trying to run these drills that the Canadian national team uh, coach told him to do. And uh, another time he's, he's doing like a pinch on a, on a drill, he's pinching down as the D-man, hog turns and blows up his mouth and it's fucking leaking all over the ice. Like, and he keeps going, right? <laughs> There's a like, dude. But it was all fine and dandy when we were winning, but then all of a sudden, the losses started piling up. And the- well, the main thing oh. I remember from my time was I was kind of the same as you. I was like, I had my year and now I'm like, I'm ready to rock. Like, let's do this. And, um, and they would play all four lines the same amount. It didn't matter who was who. Everybody penalty killed. And everybody played power play. And you didn't even call out the lines by the, like, centerman's last name. You called them the purple or blue or green line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember, too, like, I, I won a game, played great, you know, let him one or two goals. And then he comes and Brock's, uh, Brock McGill is starting the next game. And I was just like, What? You know, like, let me get on a roll here, right? But, uh, oh, exactly. And uh, so, you know, it all—it was all fine and dandy, but then all of a sudden we went on a bit of a, a losing streak there. And I think what eventually, what was uh, Matthew's demise was he pissed off Eggets. And <laughs> Eggets was, Eggets was in charge. You know, you had your, your captains and leaders and we had a lot of them, but you pissed off Barrett Eggets. So uh, Eggets finally said enough's enough. And uh, this guy, is, this is not going to work. So uh, he got he got gassed. And I can well, remember sitting That was in, the best uh, thing ever. Well, thank God, right? And so I'm at Blue Vale where Dave Officer is the guidance counselor. And he was a shoulder to cry on daily, if not weekly, daily. Go in, talk hockey, and tell him what's going on. This happened, this happened. He did this, this. And, and he, would, he would just listen, right? And he, and he made you... Uh, feel good about yourself and but he also you know he held you responsible like you know you need to do this and this right so remember when it all went down I went into officer's office and I was talking to him and kind of half jokingly laughed and I said hey you should put your resume in and didn't think nothing of it I'm sitting in the dressing room the night they bring in the new coach I'm sitting I'm Chester's not far away and all of a sudden I see that big red coat also you had that big red north face winter jacket comes in with a huge smile the big hair and me and Chester just look at each other like, Oh fuck. Like, I don't know. Is this for real? And I was like, this guy, like he's a guidance counselor, right? He's not a hockey coach, right? Well, he's is a, not, was he not a guidance counselor and figure skating coach? Uh, you know what? He coached, uh, I think high school hockey and, uh, maybe he played university hockey. So he'd be, he'd been around the game, but he'd never coached junior B. And, uh, so I was like, Holy fuck. But, uh, you know what? Then we rattled off 10 wins in a row. I think the game we went into Stratford on a Friday night, shit canned them 9 1 or something. And that kind of set the tone. Like, and then and then the room, then the, the account then was on us, right? Okay. You got rid of the you got rid of the coach you didn't like. And now it's up to you guys, right? And we had 10, 20 year olds plus a lot of talent. And it was okay, quit fucking around and go and get it done. And that's what we did. We rattled off 10 in a row. Then you go to the all-star game, break your fucking thumb. <laughs> and so then we're like, fuck, we're struggling again, right? We can't score. We're that just fucked up our whole depth chart. And, your memory's outrageous. Yeah. So then uh deadline trade deadlines a few weeks after that, that's around Christmas, and uh they bring in 
made the move for uh, Norman and Hardy. Yeah. Injected some life into us, right? We're just like, wow, nice, you know, like. Norman's sure. brother lives right around the corner from me, Todd. He's a teacher at the kids' school in Ripley here. Oh, yeah. Captain Ronnie. Well, Reed's, uh, Reed's the golf pro in uh, at the country club. Or the head guy or whatever. So, But anyways, uh, we're still struggling a bit down the stretch. And uh, I didn't and, come uh, back until the first game of the playoffs. I, yeah, I, think I, I know. I never came back. I never played a game. So we kind of limp into the playoffs, but we still get the three seed. Uh, so that's not bad. And we got Kitchener. We know we can beat Kitchener, but they're no slouch, obviously. They had uh, three of the best players in the league. They had probably the best line in the league with uh, Michigan, Sabern, and Parsons. Three 20-year-olds all had 80-plus points. So they were a handful. And, you know, they were going to get theirs. Luckily, their team... Uh, didn't have too many game breakers after that, but, and, uh, so sure enough, we go in and I can remember a famous line officer said in his office and, uh, before the first game of the playoffs and, uh, and, uh, he says something like, uh, you know, we're talking about nervous and this and that. And he's like, Jeff, you got nothing to worry about. The better team always wins a four to seven. And that always has stuck in my brain ever since then, whether it has to do with, you know, my, our games or any any kind of series you watch you know what the better team always wins a four to seven that's just that is it it's a, the ultimate kind of test oh uh, can you I know, survive it right i know exactly what you're talking about this is my turn to talk now is because like when i've been in series where like you know you got them or they know they got you like i remember in their like yeah, there. You can see a team kind of give. You know when they're like, we we don't got it, yeah. like they got us. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you start out that Kitchener series and probably the worst possible start, right? I think uh, we're down two games right away, right? First well, round. Yeah, we lose we lose game one in uh, in overtime, and we out we outshot them like forty five to twenty, and we lost five four. So the pressure's on me now. Go to game two, lose again, possibly overtime again. I know there was four overtime games in that six-game series. So sure enough, we're down 2-0. And I remember I went back, and at that point, I was staying at the Rominger's, Dale and Dave Rominger. Awesome people, right? And I went back to my room pouting, and I packed all my shit. Got my suitcases out, put all my clothes in it, uh, started boxing up anything else that was in my room, packed her up. Like, I was just on ultimate Jeff Pouty mode uh fucking ready to quit right but it didn't quit went back and uh game three we're down two nothing after the first again after the first period what are we doing here like and then eventually uh something snapped in our team and we went out and i think we outshot him two in the second period and scored five goals or something it's like okay we're back sort of still gonna win the next one and that was the other thing i remember about looking back on these uh, series is there was games every other day. I don't think we practiced anymore. You know, no. it was game Tuesday, game Thursday, game Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday. Like, you don't think, you know, you just you finish that one, you flushed it and got ready for the next one. And uh, so sure enough, we go in game four and uh, overtime, I think, right? Rank, rank off the post, clap bomb from the top of the circle. Hey, you, you know that all these play-by-plays of every game is not what the fans want of you and your podcast today. We got to go through this a little bit quicker because you know what? There's a lot of side things from Elmira we got to talk about, not just the games, you know? But um, I, I, I don't remember any of this, so I can hardly say anything. How do you remember all this? Oh, you did. You just did the Twitter thing. Yeah, I just relived the whole thing, but I knew it. I knew it before then. But uh, you know what? Those those things are just seared in my mind. I don't remember really any goals against. All I remember is big goals for, big wins for, and kind of the order we went through things. So yeah, we lose two, we come back, we win four in a row, and then we do the exact same thing in Stratford. So we were down two. Who were we were down two to Stratford the second round? Yeah, yeah, second round, same shit. We lose two and uh, storm back and win four. And, um, you know, that series, that was an epic series, right? That was, oh, it uh, was. All-time I... battle. And, um, you know, and the overtime games there, too, to win games. Against your hometown, too. 
Yep, yep. And so it was awesome. It was unreal to get through that. And then I think that once we got through that, um, we knew, I think we knew deep down that we were not going to be stopped anymore. And sure enough, Cambridge upset Owen Sound. Owen Sound was number one that year. And they were loaded. Every team was loaded with 20-year-olds that year. Um, it, was a, it was a wild year. And Owen Sound was the best in the league. And I'm not saying that we wouldn't have beat them, but that would have been another epic series, six, seven games probably. And so sure enough, we get Cambridge, who are a young team. They had a good goalie in Frank Doyle, who would go to, go to Maine. But uh, we, sh- we just shit can them, right? Storm through them. that four games? Yeah, that was a sweep, right? So then we're, we're sitting pretty, feeling pretty good about ourselves. Uh, well, so I got to explain this now, since this is a podcast that doesn't know about the Midwest Junior B League. Is So in this league, you got to play three rounds, best of sevens, to win the Cherry Cup. So that's when what we've just done, right? We've won the Cherry Cup. We've won our league. That is what we've done. We've won it. So then there's three winners from three different leagues. And now those three winners play a home and home with each team. And it's the best two out of that round. Robin now play for the Sutherland cup, right? That's correct. Well, there, so we, there you go. Go ahead. We, we start out at home against Chatham. They're the champs of the Western league. Another loaded team. Uh, I going through their roster. I think they had 15 guys get scholarships, like just loaded. I know uh, that Colton Fretter was a great player. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was good. And uh, they had won four straight Western league titles that year. Um, but they only got one selling cup. And uh, so we beat them at home game one. And then I believe we, uh, we lose the game to Thorold at home where uh, we just get shit kicked. And I stormed off the ice breaking sticks the mental breakdown game do you remember that one well that so these are the stories that we want to get into instead of every yeah. game play by yeah. play is like lackner said there was a team there to watch you that night no not that night no there was nobody watched me the year we won the Southern cup nobody not one team uh so we're we're at home again i think for that thorold game and um we hadn't played them yet and we knew they were good but they just ran a train on us all over and uh the second period we were down four nothing i think and uh we we're just getting dominated like we had not been dominated all year really and uh finally i can remember the play happening it was like a three on two to a drop pass to one more pass to a one timer and the guy just rifled the top shelf and i remember trying so hard trying to go side to side trying to and, I, and he just beat and I snapped it I felt like, you know, I'm overmatched or something, right? And I just freaked out, right? So flipped the net off, threw my stick in the corner, and I'm at the far end, second period. So it's 200 feet, and I just left, you know? I just as fast as I could to the far end, into the dressing room, down the tunnel to the stick rack, and I just started grabbing Bauer 3030s off the rack and throwing them, smashing them. Pie Petrie comes in and just tackles me from behind and we're kind of laying there. He grabs me, stop it! Okay. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Holy fuck. What the fuck just happened? And uh, you know, I don't remember if I went back in for the third or if Sugar Dan or Errol went back in. No, I uh, it wasn't Errol that night, I don't think. You know, but at that point, uh, we had no backup really, right? So yeah, you know, Errol goal- could have played, but he wasn't there. The Apple Jacks were going too far in the junior D yeah, finals. <laughs> they were actually. So <laughs> yeah. so you know what? Uh we lost that game, obviously, and uh but you know what? I, I was right back in there for the next one. We had no other goalie. And so, you know, he's dusted off and we go to Chatham for the next one. And I remember it was so hot that day that there was fog. You all are, over the you ice, are ice rambling. Ice. You got to get through the junior B. Just the, you, we got to get to it here. We got so, so much yeah. to cover, dude. We're not even close here. Well, yeah. So we lose another one and then, uh, and then we beat throw the last game. I mean, stop rushing me, you know, like, what's the big rush here? <laughs> well, we could be seven hours. Who's going to listen to that? The last game of the round Robin, <laughs> we had to win. Okay. We're in I, I do remember this. Do you remember and, this? Oh yes. This is the Shut whole up for thing. a second. Let me fucking uh, tell it. Okay. Yes, sir. We're in Thorold. We got to win. Win still, we're in. I'm still a better ping pong player than you. And Thorold, they were already in. So, 
they kind of got to pick who they wanted. And they, for some reason, got in there. Well, they had just shit kicked us 5 1. Shit so kicked the goalie us. Have a mental, have a goalie have a mental breakdown. I, so I, they're like, yeah. might as well play them. <laughs> and uh, so we go there. And after the first period, I think it was tied. And uh, all of a sudden, they send out Horton, Hayden, McKenzie, and their goalie signing autographs on the bench after the first. And then none of them play another shift. They put the backup goalie in. And then I think Fisher got a hat trick and Fearman scored that goal. From the face off, off, you know, like the burial of Mew. So we win that game like 4-2. And we're like, we're in. You got us. Wanted us, you got us, right? And go and uh, we storm nothing lead in the series. They come back and win two. Uh, But then, you know, we go, I think it was my birthday. uh, Game five, got the win there and then come home. And uh, obviously, yeah, first period, no score. And then Lackner uh, picks that pass off left side. The video of it, that you know, VHS video, man, was just, it's still, I was watching it today on the way over here. It still, still gives you the chills. chills, eh? It does. It gives me chills. And uh, so Lackner got that. And then the Fearman, you know, he strips him like a stolen car, goes in and beats him. Like, Fearman was so good. Your line, Fearman, Hog, Walton. Like that line was was ridiculous, and then to have Eggett's Fisher Kennel, and I can remember I was sitting in Dave Officer's office, and I came up with the idea to put Kennel on that line. We're sitting there, and we're you know we're oh, what about this guy here, this guy here, and I'm like Kennel because they had him probably third fourth line, and I'm like you know what he's not helping you down there, he's not a grinder, he needs to go up there, and he was probably the only other right shot we had, so I'm like that's where Kennel needs to be, and that line worked out, and then we had Eileen Norman and Hardy as your third line still have rank on the fourth line we were just really deep really deep really experienced and uh you know found a way the defense too i mean you got you got a great decor of guys who play d you know crombie and edgar lackner mitchell wong chester these guys think defense first they're not going to get a lot of points but they think defense first and we figured out how to win in our barn like no one's business i can remember games you know you got a one goal lead with 10 minutes left. It was over. It was like, you know, we get the red line, dump it in, change, get the red line, dump it in, fire it out. They dump it in, I'm dumping it out, right? And so we were just, we were a machine. By the I end do it, remember right? how well you could play the puck in junior B. They would dump it in and you would just shoot it out. <laughs> yeah, every time, right? And there was no rules um, about it. You could go wherever you wanted, right? Yeah. Later on in my career, they brought the trapezoid in. I got yeah. a good story about that later. You too, were but- like Brodeur back there though. Yeah, uh, it was. I tried to shoot as hard as I could because my thought process was if they can't shoot it on me, they can't score on me. You know, I was terrified of them getting shots on me, right? So I wanted to do everything I could to prevent that, uh, which meant shooting it out of the zone, which meant like telling my D, get up, there, there. Okay, hey, uh, hey, okay. Now we're going to stop doing play by plays of every game, and I'm just going to. I'm going to bring up different things and you take it from there. Okay. You ready? Sure. Here we go. Sorry about the sweat rags too. Oh, don't worry about the sweating. We all knew that was going to happen. Um, Okay. You decide what you want to talk about. Living with Nigel in the attic, the Elmira roadhouse door or uh, Davey O and Easter. Oh, can I do all three? So I'll yeah. do all three real quick. So do that. Living in the attic with Nigel, uh, it was an old house with real creaky store uh, floorboard. So we wouldn't go downstairs to pee. We started peeing in like orange juice containers, apple juice containers. And when we go home for Christmas, uh, Lori went and cleaned up up there. Thought, oh, that'll be nice to these guys. I'll tidy up on them. She found all our piss jugs and was just like, what the fuck, guys? And we're like, oh, sorry about that. Uh, the Roadhouse story, we mean Nigel at Maple Syrup Festival, did nothing wrong. We walk up and the door is off. The side back door is off. And it's the Roadhouse is the bar in town, folks. Yeah, the bar in town. So the door's there and uh, Nigel gets a good idea. Let's, let's take it. This would be awesome in the attic. And my Jimmy was not parked far away. So we take the thing, we pop the top out the back of the Jimmy stick the door in, go into the bar, have a good time. I go out or I went out to do something and I see bouncers walking around the parking lot and I'm like, fuck. So I'm kind of walking and I'm like, what do I do? I'm going to get this thing out of here. So 
I go to like get in my Jimmy and take off. If I, if I would have just not went, if I would have walked back in the bar, you know, I don't know who put that door in my Jimmy, but no, no, no. I tried to like, I think escape the scene, get my Jimmy out of there. The guy's busting me, call the cops. And I think my parents ended up having to write a check for a thousand bucks to the CT Tavern for that fucking door, which we did not take off. Um, officer in Easter, man. Uh, you know, officer was like a, he was like a hockey dad to me in a lot of ways. He was just an emotional support for me, right? And uh, and Easter was a perfect compliment. They call him each other so well. Easter was Easter was the hockey guy. We knew he had run the the gauntlet. He had played for the Shuriken, played in the O, uh, played the professional, yeah. played professional hockey, and he was you know the guy that instilled that kind of confidence, the hockey confidence. But Officer was the he was like the guidance counselor of the team, right? He, he uh, kept everybody just feeling good about themselves. You don't want to let him down. You didn't want to let him down. Um, so Too nice. And he, play there's, uh, there's been sightings of him right here in the area. He's uh, ran into my brother-in-law and sister at their cottage five minutes down the road. So yeah. I got to I gotta get a hold of him and uh, say hi. Yeah. I was just talking to him the other night, just on, on uh, just texting him for like an hour or two, you know, just talking about the old times and uh, yeah, you know, he's up in that area too. You Fisher, him, Nigel, like all those guys are up there. So uh, yeah, we're going to have some beer soon in person. Oh, can't wait. Okay, um, what's next? Okay. Um, then I got, uh, well, yeah, I'd say we got really in depth with winning there, which was awesome. So we win it final game four nothing, right? Or four one. Four nothing, baby. Got the shutout. Yeah, out. shut out. Win the whole dang thing, right? Yeah. And now you're not doing this. You are not doing play by play of every game the next season. Okay. No. Nope. We, we don't, don't do to. we don't do Zoom calls about it. We don't really want to talk about it. Um we won it all, folks, our second year. And then Nat and I went back for a third year. Um, we did really good. Uh, we won a lot of games. Van Nyenat's record is ridiculous. Um, 57 goals. Yeah, I broke the record for goals. But um, we, we didn't win the championship. We won the Cherry Cup, which in a lot of leagues is a really big deal. It, it really is a big deal to win the cherry cup and a lot of teams are happy with that, but we weren't. Well, you know, I guess I can start that year after from basically after we win the Southern cup, you're not starting game one and going all the way through. Cause I know you remember every game. Not starting game one. So <laughs> after we win the Southern cup, you got your full ride up. Uh, Hogs got his up. Agates is off to Niagara. Little old me. Fucking the starting goalie for the Sun Cup winning team, not one fucking school. But they hadn't school. got their they hadn't got their scholarships till our our last year, right? Who? What? Who? Hog and Lackner. They didn't get their scholarships till the last year. Hog sure. got his the same year as you. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, anyways, I was pissed. I was like, uh, you know, what do I got to do? And uh, Jamie Petrie gave me the idea. He said, "You got to go to BC. You want to get a scholarship? Got to go to BC." So I went. I went to this camp out there and the Vernon Vipers said, uh, yeah, we want to, uh, we want to have a look at you in camp. So I was like, all right, talk my shit, went out to BC and, uh, I remember again, that now, now had you're... a bad, had a bad training camp and, uh, Good. Matt Molson, Matt Molson was out there trying out too. And I remember he got beat up by, um, our captain at Niagara in like a scrimmage. Right. So me and Molson get sent packing, go back to, I remember, for call officer and being like hey can i come back and he's like absolutely <laughs> and, uh, so i go back i walk in the rink and lackner's up top watching a exhibition game or a scrimmage and i didn't tell anybody and he just looks at me like now we're gonna go right and we did we just started out like world beaters right we, we could did nothing wrong i think that year we had two 20 game unbeaten streaks it's only a 48 game schedule we had two 20 game unbeaten streaks you started scoring at a ridiculous rate. Uh, Hog Walton Kennel is, you know, argu arguably the best line in Shuriken's history. Probably not arguably, it was. And, uh, you know, we had good players below him too. We had uh, Machen was good. Um, Labatt, Hastings, uh, Rank. And then we bring in Moore. So, like, we had talent, no question. 
And then uh, we had a uh, pretty good D too. We brought back, uh, we brought back obviously Lackner, ha Lackner, um, Wong and Mitchell, and then Chester breaks his ankle. So that hurt, right? We never really played that. We bring in Mills. Mills, a good skater, right? So we're just dominating. Uh, just uh, the only way I can describe it, pure domination. I started out that year 20 and 0. And uh, I honestly thought maybe I could go the whole year. Without, without losing, losing a right? game. <laughs> you know, like that was a possibility. And then on one weekend, I lost to Stratford and Cambridge, back-to-back -back games. I'm like, all right, that's over. And, and then at that point, uh, Niagara started talking to me. And I think I uh, signed with them maybe just before the playoffs or something. So we're going to the playoffs, smoke show that too. Like none of this losing two games and battling back. Sweep, sweep. And then we got Stratford in the finals. But it's not the same Stratford team. It's a younger team. And we lose one game to them and, and then we're done with them. So now we're into the round robin and we have lost five games all year. Okay. We, at that point, we are 65 and five, 60 wins, five losses, five ties heading into the round robin. Sarnia somehow proceeds to beat us six times in two weeks. And, uh, you know, you got to give them credit. They're a good team. They had, they had 10, 12 guys go to college too. And, uh, seven games is epic series. Game seven is a coin flip. And, uh, you know what can you do right like um we didn't let anybody down man we were no we were uh we were unbelievable start to finish and uh, you know we were playing for for a city that uh for a town that had gone through a lot in the last couple of years uh with everything that would happen with, with uh, dan schneider and stuff and, and other tragedies too and but uh, you know what they, people could come and and uh you know on sunday nights that was the place to be and it was a show man we were just just destroying teams uh and uh, you know confidence in really was just at a, and uh you know so even though you know we, we lose game seven we still we, we had the best season in sure king history probably right we just you know we just didn't quite have the depth i think but you know you gotta give credit to sarnia they were good no man. they were and like and we, they, they, well you spent a lot of guys to college and pro too well like they're the, the abbott twins there that were so good Abbott that twins, no, uh, like they're 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 running a swedish elite league team now like that yeah, yeah no yeah, that, there was no shame in losing to that team that was a good team uh that's the one game that i probably still lie in bed at night thinking about that game seven and and the other game would be my last game of college hockey but uh you can't win them all but fuck me we won we won a lot man. and we and, sure uh, tried to win them all and you know what just the competitive nature of all of us and uh we just, the momentum we got from winning, the more we won, the more we wanted to win more, you know, and it was never enough, right? It was never enough. Like, no, uh, it, no. And then no we'd go, we go battle and ping pong life or death. Mm -hmm. But like, I knew what I had in you as a goalie. I knew what I had with Kettle and Hogg and Lackner. Like I knew, I was very aware how like lucky I was to be playing in Elmira with such great oh. players and like the three years we put together man like i think you shaped me in the basement like playing ping pong playing darts like it wasn't just fun it was like this matters i do it it doesn't matter what we're playing it matters oh i know i never never found a group of guy like college college was a lot of competitive guys too but uh but but there's there's certain guys that, that stand out as uh ultra competitive you know like you and agates right just can't can't lose right and then when you put like three or four of those guys together it's it's a uh, it's collision right and we all wanted to be the guy who was going to go win the game and when you yeah. got a lot of guys doing that you're going to win some games right? <laughs> yeah so, if everybody so wants to be the guy then yeah, it's, it's going to turn out all right yeah yeah so we and you know what i i look back um i you're having the chance to look back on these 20 years later and I feel like, you know, the wins and losses and the scholarships, but we kind of, we kind of left a bit of a legacy. Like uh, after that, after we left, Almara was like, they were no longer the, the little underdog. They were, they're kind of legit now. Right. And then you see what happens after in the 20 years since, I think they got three more or maybe four more selling cups. No, I, was so just, kinda, I was just, I was just playing pickleball. I was just playing pickleball with a other Sutherland Cup champion, Ethan Skinner here in Concordia. Um, he uh, he won the Sutherland Cup in Elmira too, and um, 
like yeah it's just starting a culture is like it started before me when i was a little kid watching the sugar kings win and beat the collatons who were always the team and then you see that happen with Dietrich and Collins, my yeah. favorite players, yeah. why I wore the numbers yeah. I did, and which Han. still need to come on the pod, which I hear they're avoiding me. Yeah, and uh, Derek Hahn, too. He's a local guy who he played a lot of years pro, too, right? So, Oh, yeah. No, they're, they, but, like, they learned how to win, and they showed, like, yeah. Hogger, myself, Lackner, when we were little kids watching them play. Like, they yeah. showed us what it took. We they watched the bar. We watched it. We watched yeah. what it took. We watched what they went through because we never missed a game. And um, you see what they did and you saw what it does to a town. Yeah. Um, and then you get to live it. It, yeah. was, it was fun, eh? And you know what? And, uh, and Darren Fisher is a big part of it, too, because he was on that last team with Fairman. And Fisher was the ultimate kind of dad captain. You know, like uh, he would pull me aside regularly when I would get in trouble or – get suspended or this pull me aside like hey man we're not winning anything without you we need you and just make you feel like hey he's got your back right and uh and just but he a did, warrior. He, yeah and he did it in a good way too like there i was yeah. learning and i was pretty confident that your car i was borderline cocky right oh, we and then, both were absolutely right. and like, but he kind of rain he let us go but he also reined us in and he knew yeah. how to approach us like that was too much, but that was yeah. great, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he's why sick. he's so successful in life now. He's like, he, you know? <laughs> he's a leader. He's, he's, a, he born, he's a born leader uh, in his own way. There's only – I've only played with a guy like Darren Fisher. There's only one kind of Darren Fisher. He was the ultimate kind of glue guy, acting guy. And uh, he, he was another one of those things where you didn't want to let him down. You didn't want to let him down. I sure didn't want to let Barrett Agates down and uh, – you know, well, so think about for me growing up that. with those two, like with you have those two, and it's like if I get out of the way of this shot and I go towards the bench and they look at me like you didn't block that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you can't they let set them the tone down. for how we play, Very oh, yeah. especially the consistency and just the, the will, the will to compete and win on the ice, no matter what. That yeah. was that set the bar, like, hey, this is how we play. And uh, right, yeah. everyone else falls in line. Yes, you have to have the talent, which we, we did, but we had leaders in place to show us this. And we had to do all those things just to win, to barely win. You know, it was hard to win. It was, it was so many times we're, we're on the verge of, uh, of, of losing there, right? Like if we, and if we go and we lose to Kitchener, we lose Stratford, you know what? There's the no Zooms 20 different. years later. There's no... Not it's a lot man. different. It is a lot different. The scholarships probably don't happen. This and that or the pro hockey, I you know, uh, so. But just, winning and uh, losing the games really does change your life, especially the further yeah. you get like winning and losing the games is everything. Oh, like, it winning is. In Elmira, winning in Elmira got me to Niagara. And then, then in Niagara, I used the, I used what I got learned in Elmira. Like, Hey, win, find a way to win. And, and you got uh, agates with you. That's right. So, uh, you know, that, I have the confidence in the world there. And then when I got to Niagara that I'm going to figure out how to win here. Exactly. And, uh, and that's where uh, we're at. Okay. That's where we're at. It's time. Yeah. So how do you decide, like, so you did get the scholarships Niagara. So when does that happen? And were there any other schools involved? How do you get to Niagara? I thought Western Michigan was involved. Western Michigan was uh, briefly involved at the beginning of the year. Then they signed Foster right right away at the start of the last year. So then they were out. And then Boston University was in the mix for about a minute. I remember one day at that point, I was working for my dad on the farm. And we come home for lunch one day, check the answering machine. Hey, this is Brian DeRosier, assistant coach, Boston University. Uh, Give me a call back, Jeff. I'd like to come see you play. And me and my dad just look at each other like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do know. So, uh, they come watch me play, play at Almira, and uh, I think we beat Cambridge like 7-5. Like, I'm not letting five goals all year. But I was just like, I was rattled, right? I couldn't mentally wrap my head around the fact that Boston University's there. And after the game, too, I was like, I'm sorry, you know? Like, fuck, I, I didn't have it. I was like, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll come see you again. They come to the All-Star game uh and sure enough same shit kind of happens it's an all-star game so i let in three or four 
And I'm like, what am I doing here? And then after they're like, you know what? Uh, we're looking for someone who gets their feet out from under them a bit more or something. So I'm like, okay, they're gone. But Niagara came and it happened pretty quick with Niagara. Lackner signed first. I guess was already there. And uh, yeah, they, they, they said they're interested. And uh, so I signed right away there. Like the um, first offer I signed. And um, the only other visit I went to was RIT. Me and Rank drove down to RIT and just got shit faced. It was unbelievable believable like four thousand people sold out they went in overtime we go out and who was there Han, Han there yeah i think han was there we go yeah Derek Han would have been and i'm like yeah. this, this is pretty sick you know and uh but they were still d3 at the time so i was like that was my fall fallback plan if i was going to rit d3 and uh so yeah niagara i had that locked up uh so i show up there and uh not really knowing what to expect right like pretty loose there's not many rules in omira uh but uh there's a lot of fucking rules in niagara including don't you guys drunk don't you know you guys had way more rules i think than we had like we weren't supposed to drink other than like after a saturday night game yeah. basically but um like i remember lackner not being allowed to eat butter on his toast in the summer yeah yeah they they their coach there burke holder uh you know he was kind of, he's played mind games, right? And uh, he played mind games to try to motivate guys. And, um, but inevitably we get in trouble. So freshman year, I start out and I can remember a very first practice. I called my dad and I'm like, this is the best players I've ever seen. Like it was, it went from junior B to like that. And I was like, holy shit. Like these guys can fly. They can shoot. What am I doing here? Right. And, uh, I remember we're talking to Agates too, and I'm like, look at this guy, look at this guy. And Agates is like, don't worry, they disappeared during the game. <laughs> he was kind of right. A lot of these guys. No, but look, it, you're they right. Look great when no one's hitting them. And then all of a sudden, like, where are they? Right. So uh, we get through that freshman year and we got a pretty good team. But at some point in the year, uh, I would play some games, play good, play shit. The other goalie would go in, play good, play shit. Finally, halfway through the year, coach calls us in the office and he's like, you know what? Neither one of you can fucking play two games in a row. So you're starting Friday, you're starting Saturday. And we're like, kind of worked, you know, we're like, all right, pressure's kind of off. All I have one job to do this weekend is to win my game. And I know next weekend I have one job. So it worked. And, uh, you know, so I kind of pulled my, my, my game together a bit. At one point though, around Christmas, uh, Ferris state came to Niagara. And at that point they had Chris Kunitz on the team. And he won the movie that year. I, I he remember. 75, he had 75 points. And I don't know how we got him on the schedule, but the guy was unstoppable. And they beat us 7 1, 8 1. Back to back nights. Coach left me in for every goal. Uh, I, I, one of our I'll, goalies, one of our goalies had a mystery injury, and the other one hadn't played in two years, so they wouldn't put him in. So I just had to eat it, right? And uh, that pretty much fucked my stats for the year. So after that, I wasn't worried about my goals against average. It was just try to win the game I was in and uh got through it and we ended up uh we get to the tournament and we got to win two games i think we're in the top two so we had to win two games and it wasn't my turn to play uh the first game so you know what we lost and uh that was it right so then you kind of regroup and like okay got one year under your belt and it's like like back in on my right okay i got my one year in now i'm ready to go so i showed up sophomore year and uh, right away, I think I got another stupid injury. I think I had an infection or something. So missed the first couple of games. And we lose, I think, the third game of the year. We're in a tournament in Buffalo. And it's Michigan, New Hampshire, Lowell, and us. And night one, Friday night, we lose to Lowell 6-1. And I'm in the stands watching. And it's absolutely embarrassing. Like, they just toyed with us, destroyed us. But New Hampshire lost to Michigan that night. So we got to play New Hampshire. And at the time, New Hampshire was number one in the country. It's early, like a couple of weeks in, but they're number one in the country. We're like, okay, and Jeff, you're playing. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I go in there and sure enough, we beat them like 5-2 or 5-3. And, you know, I'm diving around the net, making saves. And, and winning that game made my fucking balls feel this big. And I was like, I'm the man this year. And after that, I just took off, right? I had, I had my best year, and we ended up going to the uh, going to the CHA finals, and we got to beat Bemidji, and that goes to double overtime, I think. Eggett sets up to Lari, and we win in double overtime. So that punched our ticket to uh, to the so NCAA. So I have a question, okay? What? 
Now I need yeah. to slow you down and let me say something here, okay? When you win in Niagara University, do you guys get to party? Because you got to be 21 in the States. How does that work? I turned, I turned 21 the end of my freshman year. You know, so, but like, so what happens at like, cause I never won in college. I never even came close to like winning anything in college. So what happens when a college team wins? Cause I know what happens in junior and pro. No, oh, you know what? We, so that tournament was at a neutral site. It was in Kearney, Nebraska. So I don't know. We didn't, we had probably had some beers in the hotel, but um, nothing really happened then. But so we got the NCAAs in two weeks though. And we got Boston college, number one team in the nation. But we're like, you know what? We've we beat the number one team in the nation earlier this year. Uh, so let's go. Let's shock the world, right? And we go and we score 10 minutes in. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, okay, this is the ultimate start. Like, just hold them off, Jeff. And couldn't do it. They're just too good. Like, I think they had, I don't know, at least 10 guys played some games in the NHL. 10 fucking guys. Like, that's, that's too much, right? So they overpowered us. But the game was at, like, noon. So by three, four o'clock, okay, uh, there's 10 seniors on the team. They have no rules anymore. So sure enough, we hit the bars, right? Hit the bars with the seniors and a few other guys. And I think at that point, I'm rolling with uh, Hartman and Kerrigan with my two kind of two best boys at Niagara and Benavolio and Langdon. So this was our crew. And uh, so we ended up hitting the bars, going out. And we go back to the hotel, we're walking through the lobby and off to the side, there's like a, some sort of reception happening or something, right? We're like, oh, let's check this out. We're in our purple legal jumpsuit, purple, purple jumpsuits, literally. And uh, we cruise over and it's a wedding. <laughs> oh, sick. We go in and- you know, In the purple dancing. jumpsuits. Yeah, in our purple jumpsuits, we go to this wedding and head over to the bar. And a couple of guys start grabbing beers from the bar. They give us beers. We hit the dance floor, sing with the bride and groom. And, and they seem, everyone's having a good time. I think it's hilarious. And, you know, all good fun, right? We're not, not in good fun. We leave. And uh, next day at the airport, we're flying out. And coach, you can see something's up, right? Like, it's the guys are murmuring, like, they found out. They found out. And I'm like, oh, boy, what's going to happen here, right? And they... They knew that Niagara, the guys wouldn't rat, right? You know, and uh, so they had to come up with a way to get guys to rat without having guys rat. So I can remember we're sitting there in the uh, airport and finally the coaches, they're done their little powwow and uh, they call everyone over, like everyone over here. So we all get up and walk over and just coach kind of waits for everyone to shut up and Anybody who went to a wedding last night, stay here. Everybody else, walk away. And that was the way they got <laughs> basically 20 guys to walk away. And it's left with about five of us. And I don't know, five or six of us. And three of them are seniors. So they're like, you three can go away. You're done. So it was like me, Hartman, and Kerrigan, I think, that were still standing there. And they're like, you guys, uh, we're going to talk about this when you get back. And, um, you know, we'll let you know. But yeah, they suspended us for spring workouts, which was like, okay. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? I don't have to kill myself in Seriously? spring workouts. <laughs> so, so we were like, all right. But it also, it wasn't good because it set the tone that, you know, we were getting out of control. So after that sophomore year, uh, that's when we moved off campus, right? And this is when the mayhem kind of starts to begin in Niagara is uh, you had to live on campus for two years. That was so the rule. I, I had so to do at Western have, Michigan yeah. too. Yeah, which was fun. It was cool. But Got now, the Ronnie. Now it's now it's time to go. And Hartman starts cruising around town looking for a house. And he finds a house. We walk in, and I'm like, oh God, this is the place. It's got six bedrooms, huge, huge living room, a basement that's like meant for beer pong. And I'm like, this is the place, Hardy. We need this. He's like, okay. And I think he paid 50 grand, bought the house outright. <laughs> and, uh, moved in uh now we got to fill it right so we brought in bentavolio who was uh he was a, he was only going to be a sophomore i think but he was still young like he was 17 when he went to niagara didn't turn 18 and we kind of we we turned him to the dark side pretty much right so we got kerrigan hartman langdon myself bentavolio and then we grabbed one other freshman and uh we're just 
you start that junior year, man. And uh, well, you know what? It was uh, a good team again. And I was felt like I was the guy again. But sure enough, I go to Clarkson first weekend or second weekend. I think we beat them on the Friday and then I choked and gave up some goals in the third and we lose on the Saturday and I was furious. I lost it again. So I go in the dressing room and I go into the bathroom and I just destroyed a bathroom stall. Like took, tore the door off, tore the toilet dispenser off, smashed the toilet and I get back home. Coach wants to see in his office. Like the worst words you could ever hear. You know, your stomach just goes, oh, you're like, fuck, eh? And so I go So in I got a question. Like, so this this was in a practice no it was in clarkson no i know in clarkson but i guess sorry someone told me that this was during a practice after a practice you went in and destroyed a stall so it was in clarkson after a game and uh after so they, a game after a game after a loss in clarkson and i uh, get the coach calls me in. he's like i just got a call from campus security at clarkson they said uh, someone destroyed a bathroom, right? And I'm like, yeah, it was me. They all right, you're suspended. And, uh, you're going to take anger management. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? I'm like, Come on. But uh, yeah, so I was suspended for a few weekends. And, uh, and then uh, I had to start taking these anger management classes. And I'm seeing like a psychology professor. And you know what? Maybe it helped a bit. I don't know. Like I did have to rein it in. Like my emotions are out of control. I was, uh, I was well, a mess. if you're, if you're destroying a bathroom. Yeah. I was a mess on and off the ice. And then, uh, so finally the, the suspensions lifted, I come back and playing well again. And then we come up and we're playing you guys, you guys are on the schedule for the weekend. And, uh, so when you go to Western Michigan, you practice Thursday, you practice Thursday, two, uh, 245, and then, uh, pack your shit, hit the bus. So you'll get there. I don't know, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Right. So on Wednesday night, this was when poker was like taking over the yeah. world almost, right? The I remember that. The poker, Chris Moneymaker, guys were playing poker every night, every night. There was games every night. Just $5 games, right? But you play online poker, poker, poker everywhere. Everywhere, right? So sure enough, the boys get together for some beers Wednesday night, playing poker, and a few beers leads to, hey, why don't we check out the bar? The uh, Wednesday night was a good bar night in Niagara. We never got to go out. But we're like, you know what, tomorrow's a travel day. It's just, it doesn't even count, right? We don't play till Friday. Tomorrow's a travel day. So sure enough, the four of us, I don't know, six, I mean, who knows? We go out and it's a it's an all-nighter, right? Like 3 a.m. And so we stagger to the rink the next day and coach got a whiff of somebody. That's just all it was. Somebody's skating around for practice and he caught a whiff of some, he caught a whiff of alcohol. I don't know about me or any number of guys. He pulls me and Hardy off the ice what the fuck is going on? Nothing, nothing. What'd you do last night? Well, we played poker and Hardy's just like, play cool, play cool. cool, Right. And I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking losing it here, man. We're fucked again. And, uh, so he's like, yeah, we, let's pack. That doesn't smell like a six pack. Oh my God. So they're going back on the ice. And then he pulled the same move that he did, uh, at the airport for the wedding. Calls everybody over. Anybody who had a beer last night, leave the ice. Everybody else stay here. And, you know, at that point, it was like, fuck. So four or five of us, I think, me, Hardy, Clarky, maybe Simpson. We were like, you know, what? we were probably, I guess we were the drunkest last night. We'll leave. And uh, so we go off. So I didn't get to go to uh, Western Michigan. And that time, I think they spent me for like, pff, it might have been more like a month. And, uh, and then we still have this practice. And, uh, and bag skated us right and then so finally i think they're but we could they couldn't win they couldn't win the other goalies couldn't couldn't win right so <laughs> they had to fucking put me back in and <laughs> so but they, i can uh, so see that that's fine <laughs> oh you know what there's a lot of pressure on them so i get to practice and it's first practice where i think i'm maybe back in the lineup practice uh guy takes a shot i go to turn it into the corner warm-up practice shot broke my finger in half and then I was out for eight weeks. So, and then I, and you know what? I had a history of infection. So I had a cast up to my elbow for my, this big finger, call it the fucking foam finger there. Number one, it's never really been the same, but, uh, I couldn't do anything. I ballooned up to probably two thirty-five, And then, uh, uh, 
you know, I came back and I won a bit, but I was just like, I don't feel fucking good and go to the tournament and end up losing. So that was Barrett Eights last year and, and uh, he was done. And, uh, you know, the, at that point, we, we go home, get back to the hockey house. And at this point, the hockey house parties are starting to take over the scene, right? right? They're just getting outrageous, right? So we, we first thing we do is we get home, we pack up a van and we drive to Daytona spring break. Six guys in a van, drive to Daytona Beach and have an unbelievable week down there. And I think there's like a thousand people on the beach, like this is awesome, right? We get back and we're just throwing more parties, more benders. We were having naughty schoolgirl party. We were having, uh, oh fuck, you know, 70s party, whatever. All these theme parties, we had them down to a science. We had, after we had a couple of these parties, we figured people stopped, they wouldn't leave. We want to go to the bar. So one fucking guy gets the idea, we're going to hire a limo. So we hired a limo for 250 bucks comes at uh, like 11 or 12 o'clock and just take people to the bar for an hour. Get them the fuck out of here. So the limo is just making shuttle runs back and forth and we're just throwing these out of control parties and the, the parties are becoming like more important than the hockey, you know? Like I think there was a reporter who wrote an article about, about me and it said something like, uh, you know, him and Hartman uh, stormed out of the parking lot uh, after a loss look like they were uh had to get somewhere else like they printed this shit in the paper right and our neighbor our neighbor he was this old guy mr baker and the paper they would come to him he was an old guy he lived there his whole life and now he's got an animal house next door and he's losing it so he told the newspaper that it was a brothel he said there's women coming out of there with hardly any clothes on and i don't even think they're anywhere near 18 years old it's a brothel <laughs> Fuck, like this isn't good you know this is getting published in the paper and uh so then a straw that broke the camel's back i think there was a party and we're in the basement and uh i had my buddies in from out of town hartman's down there and he's just cleaning up beer cans you know like just tidying up and there's this chick there with a couple guys they're not from niagara from fucking canisius and all of a sudden hardy's cleaning and this chick like bumps into him and hardy you know, like tells her to fuck off or something, and she starts losing. The guys start talking shit. My buddy Clumper just grabs the fucking guy, slams him on the beer pong table, and his cock. Like, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, okay, let's go, let's uh let's get you guys out of here, right? So we get out, and she's on the street, like heels in her hand. You motherfucker, don't fucking touch me. What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here, right? Sure enough, Monday morning, party Dutchy. Coach wants to see his office, right? And we're like, oh, here we go. So we go in. She's like, yeah, I just got a call from a student at Canisius that she was assaulted by uh, the Niagara men's hockey team at the hockey house. And we're like, oh, come on, man. Like, of course she's going to say that, right? What is she even doing there, right? But it was enough. It was enough. I think the coach at that point thought uh, the hockey house, the party house was getting bigger than the program. So he shut it down. He, uh, you know, he, he had to push back and he kicked Hartman off the team. Hartman had, had worked his way up from a walk-on freshman to full scholarship at this point. He's one of our best defensemen. He's in our top four and he kicked him off. And he's like, you can keep your scholarship, come back to school, but you're out. And Hardy's like, what are you, ta- what are you talking about? And he's like, you're out, you're done. And uh, they kicked out everyone else uh, from the hockey house except me. <laughs> they didn't care. They were like, you know what? We give up on him basically, you know, let him do whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, they kicked Ventivoglio out of the hockey house. Kerrigan graduated. They kicked Langdon out of the hockey house. They moved somewhere else. And uh, so I go back to the senior year and worst possible start, I get a fucking DUI first weekend. First weekend, we're back. We're partying. And it's what? Sunday. Yes. Sunday party. First weekend back. And all of a sudden, we run out of beer. It's like 10 o'clock. So I'm like. And that first weekend back, I'll never forget. This is my, I'm going to jump in for a second at Kalamazoo. Yeah. Every first couple of weeks of school, there were cops everywhere trying to lock it down because everybody gets back to school and it is just full go. Oh God. You're so fucking jacked up, right? You just, everybody you can't wait, wait to get, to get back. Oh, oh God. Oh. So this is every exactly student, what happened. Every hockey player, every other athlete, everybody couldn't wait to get back there and do the parties, but the cops would be crawling. 
Oh yeah. So this is exactly what happened. And uh, we run out of beer at this party. It's like 10 o'clock and Hardy's. And I'm like, the corner store is literally a block away. You know, it's a one minute drive. I could have probably walked it's so stupid. We get in the car, we drive there and it's closed. Sunday night, like after 10 o'clock, it's closed. Now we're like, fuck. So, all right. We drive basically across town, 10, 15 minutes, this uh, gas station, grab as many 18 packs as we can in two arms. We go out and I remember the cashier saying to me, hope you boys aren't driving. And I'm like, oh, no, no, somebody else is. Sure enough, halfway home, he called it in and we get wheeled. And uh, so, yeah, they take me in, make me blow at the station and I was way over, right? So at the point I'm like panicking, I'm like, how the fuck? Like, so at this point, Mills has already been kicked off the team for DUI, Clark off team for DUI, uh, numerous guys, you know, they'll kick you off the team for anything. Hartman's already off the team. So I'm like, I'm fucked. I just did it to myself. And, uh, but I take, I take it in there. Like, yeah, you can try. I, I get back home and there's still some guys waiting up for me. Uh, the thing and i'm like uh my only strategy was to tell them uh yep i got out of it and they're like yes i'm like oh yeah they they said uh, just under blue just under and i'm like they're like oh fuck, thank god so i just was like at this point that's all i got you know and hopefully the coach doesn't find out and so i remember i went to a, a law professor the same one that mills used for its dui I'm like yeah i'm the next uh hockey player need help with my dui and I'm like, what's like, if this goes in the paper, it's over. And he's like, well, it'll either be in the paper Monday morning or it won't be. And uh, it wasn't in the paper. And to this day, I don't know if, if the coaching staff found out or did, didn't want to know or what. But, so then I had this kind of hanging over me, but just blocked it out, you know, fucking and to work and uh, go to the hockey house at that point too, because it was, it was too far away uh, from campus. So I had to move closer to campus and I had to get rides to the rink and shit and battle through that. That's just a mental stress of it. But when I got to the rink, man, I forgot about it. You know, just fucking play. And we had an unreal team. We had, a, we had an unreal offense team. We had Bentivoglio, Rini, and Cook was our top line. Uh, Les Rini was the leading scorer of the BCHL. 100 points in the BCHL. He ended up at Niagara because he was so fucking fat. He was like 250 pounds. He was obese. And, uh, but he was a fucking man out there. Like, you know, in the video games, they have that move where you could take the puck and still body check people like Eric Lindros. He could do that. Like that's what he's doing behind the net. Hand on one stick and fucking smashing people. And uh, they had, you know, in that I was kicking. We had, we lost three defensemen. So they kick Hartman off the team, kick Mallon off the team. Another one of my best buddies. And then, um, excuse me, another defenseman, Travis Anderson blows his knee out week one at torn MCL done for the year. So we lose three of our top six defensemen and we got Lackner and uh, not much else. Really. It's Lackner basically like, trying to get the puck out of the zone, you know, and I'm yelling at Lackner, the amount of fucking shots that guy blocked in our seven years together. Plus, you know, uh, Tulsa will get there, but Lackner was the ultimate warrior blocking shots, smart defensively. Uh, God, he's just a great dude, right? And he, oh, and, and and I, I said it when he came on episode 42, folks, is like he's my best buddy in the world, and yeah. he was the guy that would do anything. It was like, Coach, what do you want me to do? I'll do it. Oh, yeah. He's like, Wally, where do you want me on the power play? I'll stand there. Do you want me to yeah. stand here? Do you want me to stand yeah. there? Where do you want me? And he oh, would yeah. just do it, right? Yeah, 100%. And that was would be me too. I'd be. I'd be screaming at him. There'd be times where you take a puck like off the kneecap and you'd be laying a few, get the fuck up. You're fucking embarrassed. Get the fuck in the play. <laughs> we'd be doing this like half jokingly. We'd be doing it to each other mid game, you know, or I'd rip a fart that would like cloud the whole zone. He'd come in. That's you, isn't it? That's disgusting. What'd you eat? You know, just fucking so fun. To, hey, to, do you to remember? Do you, do you remember when I hit him harder than any anybody else I've ever hit? Do you remember that hit? You don't remember it. Boom eh? up! Oh man, it was it was crazy. You hit people, eh? No, not not 
No, only okay. when I only when I knew I had them. <laughs> I'd only okay. hit them if I knew I had them in a vulnerable position. Right, yeah. I'm not going to waste energy when a guy knows I'm coming at him. Good God. Yeah. That's exhausting. Yeah. Um, no, I like to surprise people. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So here's some questions now. We've gone through Can a I, lot of Niagara, it, but we haven't, we, well, we got Clarkson down. We got that, that, and that. But how about what's the Red Baron in Niagara? That was the hockey house. Oh, is that what it was called? Yeah, it was. It was a red brick house, and the, uh, Kerrigan came up with that. He was my best man, so you know he was kind of like my mentor, you know, for for partying. Right, him and Hartman, they were older than me, and uh, so yeah, that was why it was called the Red Baron. I would have been curious just to swing Great. by Niagara for a party, but I had to get on the bus and leave after we played you. That's that's where you want to be if you, if you go there. And you know what? It's still operational. It's still in uh, uh, in hockey hands. Oh, really? The players are still there? Yeah, they, they had a hiatus where they, where they were out for a while, but uh, they, they've since come back. Well, and, uh, hockey yeah. players have to be hockey players. So we go there for alumni weekend. We will go to the Red Bear. And, so, uh, Question. So, I guess, um, what are your pro options? I guess you, you've kind of explained to me personally why uh, your pro options weren't that crazy because, um, like, you are a fantastic goalie that won a lot of games and is the most competitive guy I've been around. But when you got that much stuff going on at college, your coaches ain't making many phone calls for you, are they? No, he probably wasn't. And uh, you know what? It, at the end of the day, too, at Niagara, it ain't exactly a fucking funnel to the AHL and NHL, man. Like, one guy, one guy is maybe NHL. So, and like, I don't know, he might be the only guy to play in the AHL, too. So, so it was pretty clear it was going to be East Coast or uh, or Central League, right? So, sure enough, we, we go to the my year we're ranked number one we win regular season i win uh uh conference mvp mvp with another goalie and i was mvp of my team so we get to the last game and uh and, and kind of shit the bed we lost like five two or four three or five something like that and all of a sudden just like that your college career is over tears are flowing you know <laughs> like it's what awful. the fuck am i gonna do um so i go back and uh when you're a senior, you get to go to the East Coast for a minute, right? So that was what I did. Uh, Fresno Falcons called. And they're like, yeah, I think they're allowed to sign um, uh, an amateur. Every every team is allowed to get one more player out of college or the O or whatever. They're like, yeah, Fresno Falcons, East Coast, that's in California. And what and the like, other goalies on the team think of you? <laughs> uh, you just show up at the end of the season. Oh, hey, it's almost playoff time. Oh, look, we got a new guy from Niagara. Yeah, well, you know what? It was You're just a third goalie, right? So I get out there. Well, first, to get out there was an issue, right? Because uh, I hadn't graduated yet. I was still taking four classes, and I needed to pass all of them to graduate. So I'm like, how the fuck is this going to work if I'm in California? So I had to go to admissions. And do you remember, uh, you probably didn't take any, but OAC credits? Did you ever take any OAC? I didn't classes? do OAC. I went to Conestoga right. College and took okay. a couple of those. So I took OACs. You had to take six OACs to get into Canadian University. So I took my six OACs. And when I got to Niagara, they looked at my transcript and they said, these OACs are considered college uh, credits here. And I'm like, really? Outstanding. So I get six free classes. And they're like, no, you only get four. I'm like, why? Because you have to get 65 to, to for it to uh, apply. So I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So I only got 65 on four out of the six. So they gave me the four. But now I'm trying to go to uh, uh, California. A couple of my professors are cool. They're like, yeah, I think I was taking geography. And uh, their professor was like, oh, yeah, you can do that from California. But one of my teachers was like, no, not happening. If you miss the, the final, you fail. And I'm I'm like, what? Okay. So I go to admissions. Like, what can we do here? You know? And uh, she pulls up my transcript again and, and those OACs pop up. And I'm like, what about these OACs that I got uh, under 65 on? And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you got 63 on one of them. 
we'll call that good. So I'm like, yeah, I'm off to California. So I get out there and uh, I'm the third goalie and things are going okay. And about a week or two in, it's the last game in the regular season. And they're like, all right, you're starting. They give me my token uh, first pro game. And I'm like, fucking right. Like, I remember being in the tunnel and fucking chills, tears, whatever, man. I was like, you're fucking about to play pro hockey. Like, this is unbelievable, right? So, get out there. And uh, I think we lost, we lost the game 3-2, the last cases. But I made 30 saves, about 30 shots. So quitted myself well you know and uh got off the ice dude and just got ripped the guys were great and we, they got professional hockey ripped like we drank till i don't know six in the morning at least probably and then finally just okay done the next day we had an optional skate so i'm like perfect optional so i didn't go but well, you were the <laughs> next, third goalie <laughs> I'm the third goalie so the next day i show up to the rink and uh the old the old saying, coach wants to see in his office. Oh, fuck. Here we go again. Pull me You're in. the third goalie and you didn't show up yeah. to the Pull skate so nobody like, had anybody uh, to shoot on. They're like, where the fuck were you yesterday? I'm like, I, I thought it was optional. <laughs> I thought it was optional. So did they're I. Like, it ain't fucking optional for you. I'm like, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, so we carry on and uh, I'm still a third goalie. Like, the other two goalies are good. I don't, you know, I'm, you wouldn't remember their names, but we get into the playoffs and uh, we're in uh, Bakersfield, I think, round one. And uh, so I'm doing the bag skate thing, right? That's what I'm doing. And uh, so they're just doing breakaways on me, like for fucking half an hour, breakaway, breakaway. And the assistant coach was pretty good. He wasn't that far removed from playing himself. So he's just lighting me up and I'm tired and I'm pissed. And he's coming in and ding, 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 just sniping me. Finally he comes in again and scores for probably about the sixth or eighth straight time. And I just fucking lose it. And tomahawk my stick into the corner and it goes, woof, woof. <coughs> it blows up a pane of glass. And like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so that ended practice. And uh, next, uh, yeah, got the coach wants to see in his office. So I go in, I'm like, you hey, listen, you know what? I'm sorry. I freaked out. Uh, you know, I'll pay for it or whatever. And you know, I think it was 200 bucks or something. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? What is wrong with you? And I'm like, Nothing, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fucking keep it together. I just lost it. Right. No big deal. And uh, sure enough, a week later, uh, one of the goalies blows his knee out. He's done. So now I'm second goalie. And, uh, but you know, we get through it. and the whole time too, I'm like, what am I doing here? They, they, one, one day I walk in the rink, and they got uh, C coach after practice is on the board. And they got the first power play unit up there and me. <laughs> what the fuck? That time I go in and they're like, uh, yeah, so uh, the, team, the, the team at that point, they had like a message board for super fans, you know. And apparently they were saying that all I did was during game, I used to put my headphones on and my iPod and just like walk the concourse, watch the game walk the concourse and it wasn't like socializing with fans and i guess i was coming off as just like a, an asshole and they're like the people are saying that you're an asshole and i'm like well, what the fuck like i'm not doing anything I'm, I'm i'm in the stands minding my own business i don't know anybody here and they're like fucking clean it up you know I'm like okay whatever so at that point i was like what am i doing here i miss niagara i like like the party of my life is there you know, yeah, it's the last yeah. two months of my senior year. Every weekend is a gong show and I'm not there. I'm here. Yep. So I'm like fucking missing it. And uh, and the thing drags on. We end up going to the conference finals, game seven against Alaska again. And uh, we're in Alaska for game seven. And finally, we fucking lose double OT there, I think, too. And I'm like, OK, fucking. Did, and you didn't play any of it? Didn't play a game, no. The game in game seven, our goalie got run, and I'm like, oh fuck! It was a pretty good run too. I'm like, he might be fucked here, so I'm like looking around, and surely he got up, and it was fine. So finally got out of there after two months. I was out there, and it was fun, man. But uh, I missed a lot. I missed a lot. I missed a lot more fun. I think back home. I no, I I understand. I remember when I went to Syracuse. Um, I had already been off for two weeks. And when they called me to say like, go now, 
I should have said no. I should have said, I'll wait till next year. Yeah. Um, I'm not there. I'm not there mentally. I'm not even close. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. I went because but when pro what... hockey calls, you right. fucking go. Exactly. You know, that was the thing, right? And uh, looking back in hindsight, but when a professional hockey team calls you, you go. I think yeah. that's. And, and uh, so I remember too my exit meeting there in Fresno. Like, okay, see you later. Thanks. <laughs> I walk out, and they got the next year's team on the board. And I'm not one of the goalies there. So I'm like, all right, maybe the East Coast isn't for me. And uh, so they sent their qualifying offer or whatever. But um, Kerrigan, my buddy from Niagara, he uh, just finished his first year of pro. He was the year ahead of me. And he said, hey, let's go play somewhere warm. I'm going to play one more year. Let's go somewhere warm. And I'm like, all right, where are we going? And he said, Rio Grande Valley. And I'm like, where the fuck is that? He's like, it's on the border of Mexico. And I'm like, okay, fucking whatever. So we signed there. A couple of weeks later, the coach who signed us quits and goes to the QMJHL. So I'm like, I remember calling the, uh, the coach that was left or the new coach. I'm like, are we still on the team? He's like, oh, yeah, come on down. I'm like, All right. So I go down there and, uh, you know, we start out the year and we're an okay team. So it's and- not Chris Brooks from Stratford? No, he wasn't there yet. He came after I was gone. He was a couple of years later. So the coach there was Paul Fixter. And uh, he was the coach of, you might see him on uh, Sports Center, like all time coach meltdowns. He's oh, on there. that guy, the guy that the, rips his shirt apart. No, no. He's the guy who he was coaching the Sudbury Wolves and they were having a bad year, losing a lot. And the reporter is trying to interview him after a game. And he says something, and the reporter, you know, kind of is losing his patience. And he says, did you guys work hard? And Fixer just goes, fuck you. Don't fucking talk to me like that. And this is like live recording, right? Kind of a no-no. So he'll pop up every once in a while in Sports Center. So anyways, he's the coach. And uh, first year there, I mean, it's okay. But uh, it's not the same as college. And uh, I'm playing okay. And... Um, you know, probably actually, I ended up with decent numbers. I played about half the games. And then, uh, you know what, in good town, like is 95% Hispanic on the border of Mexico. It is good weather, nice rink. And when you're at the bar, you're the only white guys in the bar and people are, are nice to you. And it was pretty cool that way. Right. And uh, it was fun too. I you know what the thing that's probably the most fun about pro hockey is riding the buses, you know, just the, the beers and the cards and the stories Being on, with on the, the hockey buses. guys, like yeah. nothing beat that to me. That was what I couldn't wait for was to get on the bus and play fucking cards and, uh, and tell stories and have some beers. And well, uh, and that's exactly what I'm doing now. And this is the 50th episode and I can't, 50. I saved you from the start because I, you're just such a gosh darn dandy that I like you said two months ago, you're going to be number 50. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, and then 50 Man came, your word. 50 came quicker than I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're counting them out, buddy. Yeah, yeah, you got you got to work hard, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you want to be number 1, mm-hmm. you got to give her, right? That's, That's right, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, like what? So they got they got to all organize each other to do one a week. I got to organize me and you to do one today. Yeah. And you know, you got that. the next five already lined up, eh? No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. But, so anyways, I, in uh, Rio Grande Valley, we get to, we're going through the year, and uh, uh, we're going to make the playoffs. We get to the last couple um, weeks of the year. My goalie partner there was Jeremy Symington, and he became like a, like a mentor to me. He is, he's been pro for probably five years at that point, And, uh, just an awesome dude. And he would play poker. He would, he would make more money playing poker online than he did playing hockey. He would go as soon as practice is over back to his laptop and six games on the screen, you know, that kind of shit, like full, 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 full pocket aces. Boom. Like he would do that all afternoon, all night. So if he could, he said he could make, I think 20, 30 grand sometimes in on online poker in a season. So anyways, he's a great dude and we're having a good time. We got my buddy Kerrigan there. We're running around town. And uh, but then it gets to the end of the year. We're both playing about half the games. We go to uh, Bozier Shreveport, the mud bugs down in Bozier Shreveport. 
and it's a big casino town. So after the game, uh, si- uh, Symington goes out to the casino by himself. You know, like, it's not like we're going out partying. Like, he didn't tell anybody. He goes to the casino. He's having a Diet Coke, playing blackjack, and it's getting probably 11 or 12 o'clock. And uh, coach walks by. And he said the coach just looked at him, and he kind of looked at him and said, hey, what's up? Coach didn't say a word. Never played him another game the rest of the year. So I <laughs> fucking I played down the stretch. And uh, there, he was just, and we were almost like, sorry, man, like, fuck. I, I, if I'd start you if I could, but, uh, you know, I guess I'm playing tonight, <laughs> you know, and he was like, whatever. So it wasn't too concerned. And, but we get to the playoffs and we got to play against Laredo. And Laredo is like, they shit kick us. They're just better. They got three, three vets that have been there for like 10 years. And then best duvet reve, man, they're just better. They got Terry Ruskowski, an old NHL coach who brings in winners and they just bury us, right? So in that division, we had Laredo, Corpus Christi, and Austin. We played every team 12 times. Like that was, you learned these guys, like nobody, right? But the, every time we go there, just destroy us, right? So anyways, this is our first round matchup. We're like, all right, there we go. We go into Laredo game one. So this is my first ever professional playoff game. And I put on a fucking show wall. He just standing on my head, bouncing around, ended up making 66 saves. Kerrigan scores the game winner and we win like 5-3, I think. And I'm like, oh, dude, it was unreal. Between periods, I remember going into the dressing room, take off all my shit, put it in the dryer, shape, new shit, comes back on, dry it off, back out there, 20 saves, okay, boom, in the dryer, back out. And it was just one of those nights, Wally, where they were firing it from everywhere and I was just bing, no, but I've seen it. I've I've, I've literally kicking watched out you do rebounds, it. No, but I've rebounds. watched you do it. I've watched you do it. I've literally seen you do it. I I know the type of night you're talking about. Oh, yeah. It's the night when you get back to Stratford and you're like, you know what, you mother effers, like, like you are not beating me tonight. Yeah, I so, don't care. And like no. Hog, Kennel, Walton, we're, they're going to go out there and do their thing. But oh, yeah. you ain't scored on me tonight and you can go fuck yourselves. Yeah. That's what it you'd say. Exact. I'm going pee. Keep talking. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, I uh, finish up that game and we're up. So now we're up one nothing in the series. And I'm like, holy fuck, you know, maybe we've got some magic here. And uh, that was short lived. I think the next game we lost 2-1 and uh, never found the magic and I lost three in a row and then the last game they put the put the other boy back in they gave up on me so uh yeah we lost that game in overtime so that was it first pro season in the books and um you know it was like okay I head back home I think at that point I was living in Guelph and uh head back there and you know there wasn't many other options really it was Resign there, and um, so I resigned to go back, and uh, and you know at that point I was like, I don't know, it, it wasn't that fun for me anymore. It wasn't that awesome, but I was like, whatever, I'll go back for uh, for one more year or whatever. And uh, we go back, and actually the uh, the coach, the fixture guy, the coach there, he used to be he used to be the coach of Hershey. So uh, it comes around to, uh, to the fall and he's like, Hey, I got you a, uh, uh, into the Hershey bears training camp. And I'm like, really? Okay. Well, that's fucking cool. Like this is the, the first sniff whiff of the AHL I've ever got. This is fucking pretty big time. So I'm like, fucking right. So I go there and it's not a tryout. It's not a, it, you're a training camp goalie, but still cool So I'm there. And I'm, and I'm, I'm staying out of trouble and, uh, and I'm playing, you know, I was actually surprised. I figured in the AHL, uh, that there was going to be like ridiculous, hardcore off ice training, maybe, or something. None of that really. Like the, the, the training camp was just practice and go back to your hotel. And there was a little circuit maybe to do with some push ups and wall sits. And it was just so laid back kind I, of, and can I, jump in there is i couldn't believe how they they'd left you to be professionals like yeah you we, do it we, on your own there no like we had never been treated like adults or people that wanted to be good at hockey or like 
in college, it was more like, don't do this, this, and this, but it wasn't yeah. like, you guys can come use the weight facility. You can come use the rink, like come use it. Like it's here. Like if you want to, but like, I guess you are the same as me. You wanted to go have fun too. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so in Hershey, I do have one good Hershey story for my fucking minute in the HL. So we get through like a week of this stuff and then we're starting exhibition games and uh and we're playing the wilkesbury scranton penguins kyle rank is on the wilkesbury scranton penguins at this point so uh i'm playing against kyle rank and so after practice they post the lineup on the coach's board who's playing tonight against wilkesbury scranton and sure enough fucking jeff benign and jeff patriziak patriziak was uh new hampshire goalie so i'm like fucking right i'm playing a fucking ahl game and uh, I look at the board, and I think they had Patriziak's name first, then mine. And I'm like, fuck, I wonder who's starting, you know? Like, am I starting or am I coming in halfway through? So I sit there for, a, fuck, I think 15 minutes, you know? And I'm in the lounge, and I'm looking. I'm like, should I ask? And I'm like, no, don't fucking bug them, right? And the coach is uh, Bruce Boudreau. So later that year, Washington gassed their coach, and Boudreau went up. And he was there for, like, 10 years, so... Bruce Boudreaux is the head coach. He's sitting in his office back there behind this door. And I'm like, I got to fucking know, right? Am I starting or am I going in halfway through? So finally, after 15 minutes, I'm like, just fucking be a man. Ask him. Just ask him. So I knock on the door. Yep. And I peer in. He's sitting behind his desk and kind of looks up. Yep. I'm like, oh, hey, coach. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I just was wondering uh, wh which goal he's starting. And he kind of looks at me and he looks down. Who are you? And I said, uh, Jeff. Jeff who? Benign. You're not starting. Okay. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Good. I'm out of here. So then I go back and I'm like, so I'm coming in halfway through, right? I figure, okay. So then we get to the rink and the AHL is just so fucking cool. You get there, there's a table in the middle of the room and there's a menu on it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? A bunch of menus on the table for like an Italian restaurant, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And they're like, yeah, you, you, you order what you want and you, and you, and then they bring it to you after the game. I'm like, what? Yeah, so I remember, like, oh, I remember it. I remember the fucking chicken parm and uh, French onion soup, you know, whatever. And then you leave your cash, your $24 with it. So I'm like, God, this is cool. So anyways, we go into the game. The other goalie starts and it gets to be second period. And I'm like, okay, let's fucking go. Right. Like, this is big for me. I still, I don't care if it's a fucking exhibition game. I'm fucking jacked up. Like it's Friday night at the Almond. I'm ready to go. So it was like, well, I figure I'm going in at the 10 minute mark. And so it's like 12, 13, 12. And I start like really start doing a lot of aggressive stretching. I'm in the tunnel. I'm in the hallway. I'm feeling the grinds. I'm fucking getting it all. I'm looking at the coach. I keep looking. And he kind of looks at me once, but he's, he's doing his thing. Right. And finally, I'm like getting really close to 10 minute mark now. So I'm looking at him like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. And finally he comes out. You're not going into the third period. Just fucking stop it or something. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool no problem it just worked go so in for the third shut him up. i don't know if i got like i don't know eight shots or something and uh but did not let in a goal and i think i made a save on a two-on-one i'm like oh, oh that's a fucking hl save baby so it was cool man and then after the game oh i don't remember honestly if we won or lost i think it was three two or two one but i don't remember if we lost all i remember was i didn't let in a goal and I remember talking to Rank after the game, too. And I couldn't believe, like, how far Rank had come, you know? Like, I know. He'd come from fourth line Elmira, and he played the most AHL games out of anybody. Like, he, and I remember yeah. that in my Niagara, too, when I first year there, coming up to me, and they're like, what do you think of Rank? And I'm like, well, you know, he's just a guy. or He's just he's a good player. I mean, he's not a superstar offensively or anything. But, like, if he could have been fucking captain of Niagara and not St. Lawrence – and, uh, you know, the progression he made, and that's all heart. He was the most – he played hockey with the, probably the most heart I'd ever seen, right? And just – You're right. No, he, he was a giver. He gave her – He and he played with his heart. You're absolutely he right. He played with his heart 100%. Smart and heart and character. Like, if there's pictures of him in an AHL jersey. There's a fucking letter on it, you know, for a reason. Because he's heart, character. Um, so, yeah, that was my AHL experience. And then uh, I remember the coach saying to me, Okay, you proved you did it. See, uh, you know, and they're like, okay, that's it. And um, Rio Grand for what would be just a, basically a disaster of a year. We get out there, 
and we added nobody and we lost a few guys and we're just like, Oh fuck. And sure enough, the losing starts. And I think we had a 20 game losing streak or a winless streak at least. And, and, uh, and it was starting, you know, I had never gone that long without a win. And I, just, um, I started breaking down. Mentally. To be honest with you, I think you're very similar to me. Um, the, the darkest years I had in my life were when I was losing, um, when I was in beating Heim, and there was a time where I had 20 goals in 20 games and we were in last place. And I was like, I don't, I don't even know what to do anymore. And I just kind yeah, of, but looked, Wally, at least you got 20 goals in 20 games. No, but I was goalie, losing my goal, mind. I was actually trust losing me, the my goalie mind. on your, whatever, what was that team beating guy Heinen? The worst fucking name in pro hockey. Whatever beating city Heim that Steelers. Is. The Beating Heim. What was the German team you played in? What was that city? Beating Heim. Beating Heim. Okay. That's just the name of the okay. town. Well, you, I guarantee you their goalie was having a lot worse time than you. Well, you know, because no I, I probably, shit. He's, you know, sorry, I won't say anything, but no. I prided they, myself on winning. And when I, when I wasn't winning, I felt like a loser. So I started to basically. Well, that's, that's a, how we all feel though. Like yeah. when you're the, the, the first line player on the top team in the league, it feels this, it doesn't feel the same when you're the top line player on the last place in team. It doesn't matter oh, yeah, how many I points you get. Yeah. That's not as exciting. It's fun. It's not as fun. It's boring. Right. But I just started to break down and, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't buy a win and I was, I was lost all my confidence. So, and I needed that. I needed that confidence, that swagger, that cockiness to to play well, right? And, and when I wasn't getting little, the results. You, need, you needed a little like, Dave Yo. You needed a little Dave Officer there. You know what? I just needed a better team in front of me. You know what? I, I needed to blame myself a little less. We had, we were not a good team, and I and I blamed my the whole thing on myself. Where the truth is somewhere in between, right? When you're the best team in the league, uh, you know what? It wasn't all me. It was a good team. And when you're the worst team in the league, it wasn't all me. We were a bad team. I couldn't wrap my head around it. I couldn't take the losing. And finally, uh, I get the call one day at lunch. You've been traded. You've been traded to the Mississippi River Kings. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Go down to the arena. Pack your shit. Fuck's sake. So I, I think I was, I cried. You know, it's like getting cut. It, it was like getting cut. It yeah. wasn't like a blockbuster trade. It was, you know what, we give up on you. So it hurt, man. It hurt. Like, it felt like getting cut again. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, right? And at this point, you know, I'm making 500 bucks a week for for six months of the year and I'm losing every game. I'm like, what am I doing here? Right. So anyways, I go to Mississippi and you know what? Silver lining Mississippi is unreal. They're a stacked team. One of the best in the league and both their goalies are hurt. So I'm like, okay, the one goalie is only going to be hurt for about two weeks. The other goalie is out long-term. So I'm like, okay, there's an opportunity here, right? Like, do you want to fucking do some winning? So they bring in two goalies, me and another guy. Ian Kesserich, he was out of Ohio State. And uh, I'm like, you got two weeks to fucking outplay this guy. We're keeping one of you. And I think I went one and two, and he went two and one. Coach wants to see in his office. I'm like, oh, here we go again. Pulls me in, and the coach was uh, Kevin McClellan, the old tough guy for uh, the Edmonton Oilers. And he was a good dude, and he smoked darts. And uh, we used to have darts and coffees together. So this is when my smoking kind of – was out of control at that point in college i tried to rein it in a bit like i wouldn't sure as fuck wouldn't let coaches see me i still smoked but i would like quit for the playoffs you know or just tone her down but in pro i didn't care anymore i was smoking in front of everybody before the game i had my coffee and smoke before the game right and, and so anyways he calls me in jeff i moved you to tulsa and i'm like oh fuck you know i quit i quit he's like no 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 you can't quit I'm like, I fucking quit, man. I'm done. I suck. I don't know what happened to me. I fucking, I lost it. And he's like, listen, Jeff, relax, relax. Just, you know what? They need a goalie. Go finish it off. And it clued on me, Tulsa, that's where Lackner is. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, fine. I'll go finish it. Off. So I pack my shit. And it's like Lackner said, you know, don't unpack your shit. Though I didn't unpack my shit and say, threw it in my Honda stick, drove from Mississippi to Tulsa. And uh, I think there was a game that night. Like I got there and the team was on the ice for warmups and uh, they're like, can you get your shit on in time? I'm like, really? <laughs> I just drove six hours and it's half hour before the game. Okay, fine. Throw my shit on. And, but at that point uh, they were out of the playoffs. Right. So I had actually, 
some legendary names on that team. Jeff Christian played forever, 20 years pro. Uh, David Beauregard, 20 years pro. Uh, Brendan Hodge, great player. Warren McCutcheon, power forward. He's a farmer in Manitoba. I still talk to him regularly. And, uh, you know, Lackner's on the team. Paul Kelly's on the team. Oh, so Paul actually, Kelly. They, you know, Paul Kelly, you Paul, two were on the same team, eh? Paul Kelly's on that team. So our power play was unreal. But I think they put out those five guys on the power play, and they gave up, I think, 25 shorthanded goals that year. But they probably got 40, I don't know, like, the, uh, you know, they were plus on the power play. But, you know what, we're so far out of it that it's just, honestly, it was, it was a lot of room to be in than Rio Grande because in Rio Grande, everyone was feeling the, the weight, you know, the coach especially, right? Like, oh, God, you know, and he was negative and everybody was just not having a good time. Whereas in Tulsa, hey, we're out of it, you know? You're getting paid, fucking go play, right? And so I was playing every other game and I still wasn't playing good and we weren't winning, but whatever, you know, play your game. And it was exactly like Lackner said, uh, go. And uh, after practice, I would take all my goalie shit off and go bomb around ripping clappers, uh, you know, and uh, I would make Lackner put on my gloves and helmet and I would rip clappers at him from the blue line, right? So he could still still catch it, right? I wasn't coming in tight. And, but yeah, I made Lackner play goalie for me after basically every practice pretty much. And then sure enough, we get to the end of the season and we had three and three that weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, so Saturday night, we're somewhere and I think somebody took a puck off the face like a fucking bad one you know like his eye was almost swollen shut and it was gross I can I can picture him still having beers that night but his face was blown up and Paul Kelly too he's the only guy I used to see he double fisted at the bar one was his spitter and one was his beer right so he fitting in this one take a swig chewing and drinking at the same time just fucking blitz too right great dude great Great guy to go to the bar with, but uh, so yeah, the last Saturday night game, uh, we go out drinking because what the fuck, why not? Next game is a is an afternoon game in Wichita. We show up to the rink in the morning and then ten o'clock or something, and uh, and sure enough, uh, coach comes pulls me aside and he's like, fuck, "We don't have enough guys." And I'm like, "What?" Yeah, it's like uh, Luby didn't show up. Luby was a defenseman, young kid. And he basically got too, he was too hungover. And he said, uh, you know what? I'm not coming back here next year. I'm too hungover. So I'm not playing. Wouldn't come to the ring. And uh, he had the guy with the fucking swollen eye shut. And then this other, uh, the coach's brother. So it was the Hodge brothers. And uh, the coach's brother uh, was sitting at 249 professional games. And if you played on that Sunday, he would be at 250 professional games. And then he'd be deemed like a veteran the next year. And you could only have three or four vets. So like, we can't play him. We need him oh, to be and not on vet next year. So yeah. he's like, but he's not playing. He's not, he's hurt. And he's not, he didn't show up. Can you do it? I'm like, fucking right. I can. So I go in. I like, heard you asked for it. No, no, no. I was supposed to start net that night. And I thought, you know what? This is my last game of pro. Um, you know, I'm playing that. And, but when I showed up and he said, we need you, I was like, fucking right. Cause I'd bombed around and I'd always wanted to be an out player. And I thought, you know, I thought I would have been a, a decent out player. I probably wouldn't have made it as far as I did as a goalie, but who knows, man? Like I thought it was, be it was better, more my mentality to just go play out, run into people, you know, no. maybe, maybe score some goals, maybe be a checking line center, but I don't no, know. Anyway, no, it doesn't matter. No, no. No, you would have taken a lot of suspensions. Yeah, so I, uh, I'm like, absolutely, I can do this, coach. So I packed my bag, and I think it's a three-hour drive to Wichita. I didn't sleep a wink. You know, I'm in my bunk. I'm like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> so I go around and uh, bombing around the ice for warm-ups, and it's still a packed house. Wichita, they come out no matter what. They're just as far out of the playoffs as us. The nothing game, but there's like five, ten thousand 10,000 people there. I swear to God. And uh, there's this kid. So I'm doing the loops around and this kid, the banana, and I'm like, I'm focused, right? I'm not fucking talking to fans. This is warm up time. Banana, and he goes around a third time. Banana, and I'm like, what? He's hanging over the glass behind our bench. Like, just when I thought you couldn't get any worse, you started playing defense. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> so, 
Oh yeah, I had to take that one. And uh, so yeah, we had to dress our trainer. Our trainer is in my goalie equipment sitting there and I lit him up. Like I'm trying to take a snapper as hard as I can. Shoulder, the head. Oh fuck, sorry about that. Uh, you know what? I've taken plenty over the years too. So fuck off, you know? And uh, But he wasn't one of the, one of the players shit. shooting at you. He was just a trainer, right? Well, you know what? Wrong place, wrong time. So yeah, early on too, there's a play... A guy, puck gets rimmed around, and I come down and just bury a guy with a cross check, right? Big melee ensues, and I just remember a lot of angry faces looking at me. They're team, like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, who the fuck are you, right? And I'm like, what, what? I remember yelling at the ref, too, like, come on, you know? And the ref's, like, must have been just like, what the fuck is this? Get in the fucking box. So I get out, and uh, then another play, I think, is like a three-on-two, and I jump in, you know, like I'm in the slot, like, yeah, yeah. And the guy, I think, tried to hit me, and it got turned over. And I just fucking pontoon boat some guy back up the ice. And it's hooking. And I think they scored on that uh, power play. So I got to do the walk of shame, you know, from the box back to my bench, you know. Just, <laughs> God, stupid penalty, Jeff, right? And I'd get back to the bench and lack and be there like, what were you doing on that play? You know, you didn't get your feet moving there, did you? <laughs> and he was great. But we only had 4D. So he's like, yeah, you're up. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, you're up, man. You're taking a fucking regular shift today. Everybody's hung over. And they're like, you're not getting out of this. Like, you're here, you're dressed, you're playing. So I probably played 20 minutes that night. <laughs> 25 minutes. And uh, I remember another time, too, I rimmed the puck. I was feeling a bit of the heat on a dump in. And I'm like, I'm going to get buried here. Like, somebody just... Is gonna say I'm gonna fucking light this stupid. But you already up. you already lit the other guy up. Yeah, I mean I made some space for myself out there early <laughs> on, right? So, so I feel the heat and I just rim it to nobody. D picks it off in front goal. Get back to the bench and Lackner's like, who are you? Who are you rimming that to? Who is that? Who is that? You can't take a hit to make a plan. Fuck <laughs> off, man. You know. <laughs> So yeah, get through that game. I think I ended up dash two with four pims and we lost like seven, four. And uh, after the game, we were having beers and the coach is like, are you done or what? I'm like, I'm done. That's it. You know? And so I made the decision then I was, I was, uh, that was so, that, so your hockey career ended with you as an out player play like in pro. And then uh, now, here are my questions. I haven't got a lot, eh? Do you well, know we that? through it. How far in are we? How, how long is this thing now? Oh, dear. We're we're two, two hours, hours in. We're two hours in, and I've hardly talked. Oh, like, how am, I, how am I supposed to stay sober with this going on? Yeah, I know. Um, I want to know about your men's league. I want to know about um, how many injuries you've caused. And if you pass, if I pass, you know what? Well, I guess let me put a bow on my goal standing first. Okay. Sure. After that, I'm done. Right. And I go back, but then the fall comes around it's a bit of the itch again. Right. It's my first fall where I'm not yep. really playing yep. hockey and yep. I'm like tough Fuck. times, and tough times, the old, the old senior eight. And I'm like, you know what? There's two senior A teams in my area. You didn't play for like, Clinton. And I'm like, no, uh, Clinton actually would be the third. But there's the Milverton four-wheel drives and the Tavistock Royals, both with it 15 minutes. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm still a fucking professional goalie. I'm, you know, I can still fucking play a bit. So, you know what? I'm going to go out. And so I go out to Tavistock, and they're loaded. I think they won it the year before, won that league or whatever. And I'm like, this team's good. So I go to the coach. I'm like, how much? How much you guys pay? And they go, oh, we don't pay our players, but we want you. You know, we're going to win. You got a great team. You'll make it even better. I'm like, all right. I go to Milverton, awful team. Like, there's not a player on the ice. And I'm like, oh, God. So I go back and forth, go back to Tavi. And I'm like, how much? You know, like, how much can you, how much can you break off? And I'm like, Jeff, we don't pay our players. We want you. Sign. But we, pay, we don't pay our players or we pay them all the same. And, uh, you know, let us know. So then I go back to Milverton and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to get the bright idea here. I'm going to, I'm going to tell Milverton that I want a hundred bucks a game and they'll say no. And then I'll go play in Tavistock. I thought that that would be like out of their league. I text the coach, like I'm in for a hundred bucks a game. And, uh, he texts back. Okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. What have I done? 
So I go to Melverton and first five games, 0-5. We lose to Tavistock 10-0. And uh, the fifth game, we're in Moncton, which is like five minutes from my house right now. And that's a team full of guys who are from Mitchell. And I don't like them. They don't like me. And uh, they're giving it to me. We're down 5 nothing early and they're giving it to me. So I'm like, fuck, this is a fucking, why am I doing this? And uh, at the end of the second period, I'm lining up for a face off. And there's like a commotion way down on our bench, like they're yelling. And, and the, even the raft and the players are like, what is going on over there? It's almost like a fight on our bench or whatever. So drop the puck, finish the period. I'm skating off and we get down into the tunnel, going to our room. And this kid on our team is just tomahawking his stick off the walls and motherfucking and swearing and throwing his shit. And we get in the room, we're like, fucking settle down, you know? Like, we're getting our ass kicked. Just fucking take it, right? And tell him, you know, just shut the fuck up. And then he looks at me, you shut the fuck up. I'm like, no, you shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. That was it. And then I jumped off and started swinging at him. And they started, he's swinging at me. And our guys are breaking it up. Fuck you. Fuck you. And then I just, that's it. Fucking done. Took my chef right there, put it in my bag, didn't shower. Boom, out of here. And uh, walked by the coach on the way out and just said, I'm done. And uh, the next week, went to sport check, bought a bunch of out gear and didn't play goalie ever again, really. So that was it. That was the goal on goaltending. And at that point, I was just was like, I fucking hate goaltending. Not doing it anymore. It's not good. Well, if you play on bad teams like that are getting just yeah. lit up by a team that didn't take you, that, that'll, that'll drive you up the wall. I know yeah, you. I know. You know what? I just, I just, I hated goaltending at that point, and I hated. But how? Goaltending. Who were their goaltenders? Why were you not on Tavistock? I just, I, I chose not to play in Tavistock because they wouldn't pay you. Yeah, so I took the hundred bucks a game for five games, and then fucking quit. So I got whatever. you. I got you. So yeah, I remember my my parents were at that game. <laughs> and, uh, I remember. I think my mom or dad went to the bathroom between periods and came back and. Uh, and my mom or dad said, well, we can go now. And we're like, what? And I guess yep, Jeff's done. We just quit. <laughs> just like, what the fuck, you know? And you know what? That was probably the one thing that was missing in, uh, in pro for me was, was, was my parents. A lot of it, dude. Like, you know, my, no, I know. my parents I know. were there every single game and you played for them. A lot of it, you know, it was weird, but you did. I can remember coming off the ice when the song cut, my dad's there with tears in his eyes. Right. Like, God, man, it was, it was, it, when they weren't there, it was like, fuck. It, it is fun. weird, it eh? No, you're right, because, like, the whole reason you were playing hockey and everything was, like, kind of to make them proud, but, like, you loved it, too, but yeah. making them proud is really exciting. You went on and then when you together. go pro, like, when you go pro, when I left Western Michigan, and then all of a sudden you're playing games all over the place, you're your parents like they were making the trip to the western michigan parties with all the other parents oh, yeah, but dude. all of a sudden it's over all of a sudden yeah. like they can't make it and then you're oh. they're making like a handful of your games a year yeah. and like it's just different because then all of a sudden you're playing a game and you're like this just doesn't feel the same you know what my dad came to uh one game my mom and dad came down to rio Grande valley for one weekend it was my dad's birthday and uh, so it was the end of year one, and uh, it was the only shot I would ever got in my pro career. My dad was there. Awesome. That sums it up, right? You know? Oh, that's awesome. No, but it's... I it, think it, I was playing for, right? You know, like, uh, it was awesome, right? And I missed... I'm, mean, you know, calling him out for the game. It was depressing. I'd be like, I feel overmatched, man. I'm embarrassing myself. And he, there's nothing he could do. You know, he's a, mile, a million miles away, and, and he... It's like he couldn't save me anymore. And I was just like, fuck this. But you know what? So after that, you know, now I'm in farming mode. I basically went back, went to work for my dad again, and we bought a farm. And uh, you know what? Fuck, I don't regret that because, you know what? If I fuck around and play for a few more years, bro, the price of farms at that time just went oh. fucking up and up and up. So if I do, if every year that I would have kept playing pro, probably would have added quarter million dollars to the farm I bought, you know? So it was the right time, the right place to get a farm. And, uh, and you know, it, things kind of work out in the end. And I wouldn't trade anything for anything, Wally. If they said, you know what, you can go back and do it over, 
fuck off. No, no. I'm taking those three years in Elmira before Niagara and I'm running, you know, like you can't, I no way would I, would I go back and, and I would change some of the ways I acted, but I would not, I would not go back and try to get more or get, you know, like get to go to a different school. Like I got to play a hundred college hockey games. And if I go to any other school, I probably don't play 10 or 20, you know? So no, there's dude, a reason man. I ended up there and it worked out. No, man. But like you were one of the best goalie. Like, I don't, I don't know if I played with a better goalie than you. Um, like well, you had I certainly a lot. Didn't, I certainly didn't play with a, with a, with a better score. I mean, and I looked at your DB stats and it's, it's here. You were just, just punishing punishing uh goals assists man that must have been so fun anyway you know i i like it i'm like how did he do it right because i mean you're, you're you were fast and you had good hands and you had a good shot but it was it was uh it was more than that it was i don't know you you found you found a way you wanted it more kind of you know like you were out on the ice you wanted to fucking score you wanted to like you know kind of embarrass teams a bit you know like when you were in your that last year in night in Elmira some nights it was, it was funny like this fucking guy is dominating you and he's not going to stop he's coming out this shift you let him score he wants to get five tonight like that was that kind of your mentality some guys get a goal and assist and like that's that's good right but the, no, yeah, no, the no. thing was if you're gonna he... let me get five I'm going to fucking take five. But know? the thing is, is like, I kind of lost that along the way. Right. Like uh, along the way I get to Germany. I'm like, well, I'm playing a shitty team tonight and we're going to win. Like I can kind of ease yeah. through this one. And then you like, when you, it, you can do I, I, I decided I wanted to be a big game player. And I was like, when it's time for the big games, like I'll be there, but like, I don't want to, I don't care about beating a team seven, nothing. And like when it's six, nothing, I don't care about getting another goal. I when want you're a six, eight year pro. You're allowed to do that. You know, like you kind of, I guess I don't know. Settle it. You can settle in a bit. Right. But for your first, probably seven years of your career, you were torching, you were taking whatever the fuck. They oh, you. it was, I, it no, was never you're right though. And you lose, enough. you lose that. You lose that in you. I remember times when I was younger and a guy would lay out to block a shot in front of me. And I would be like, you're going to block my shot and you don't have a face mask on. And I would be like, I would be willing to do some shit that ain't good. Yeah. But make a little room for yourself. Well, the next time you think that guy's going to fucking lay down. Oh yeah. You had to, you had to, you had to uh, get some room for yourself. Cause let's face it. You're five fucking seven or five, eight. <laughs> I love how you're a Meyer program. You're one, you're five, seven, year two, you're five, eight. You're still growing. But I love that. But you had to make some room for yourself. No one was going to fight your battles for you. So you no. almost had to be, you had to be willing to spear the odd guy or to hit the odd guy to, uh, to let him know that, Hey, you're not just going to fucking run me over. Fuck that. Well, it was like, it was the same as, ping pong with you in the basement same as shuffleboard euchre it didn't matter what the fuck we were doing like like i'm playing for keeps and you're playing for keeps and you're going to be pissed off if i win and i'm going to be pissed off if you win but at the end of the night we both did the best we could and like shit gets complicated when you get into pro and contracts and all the other stuff but like back in the day when we just were elmira sugar kings Mm -hmm. and we had agates Fisher, Fearman, we had Newts, and we we like everybody, like like literally the whole team, everybody that taught us different things, like all the different shit we went through as teammates. Um, like we were together for three years. That was through high school, we went to different schools. Thank fucking God. If you would have gone to I my wish, high school, I, 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 I might not have gone to Western Michigan. If you were at my high school, that would have been a problem. Thank God, I, if I had Davey to do it officer over again, took I, you. I, if I had to do it over again, I might have went there. But I think you guys had day one, day two, right? Instead of uh, like I don't even know what you're talking year. about. Yeah, Your memory is a mess. Yeah, it, it's pretty pretty sharp for for an old guy. I know. Well, um, but like literally, what you've done in your career, but like you shaped me. You shaped who I am. You shaped 
everything about me. And like, I have so many stories about you off camera um, <laughs> that uh, like, you know what I had, I, we know, were I, having I was, fun, weren't we? I was competitive on the ice and competitive off the ice, man. I wanted to have, I wanted to have the most fun off the ice. So, you know, like I, I did. And I think even officer said that to Niagara when they were asking him about me, they were like, what's he like off the ice? And he, he couldn't lie and say, he's a, yeah, he's a, you know, he's, he's, a, he's totally normal, he, you know, cause I wasn't right. I was, it was, a, I was a mess a lot of times, but I was, I was all always about having fun with my teammates and I wanted my teammates to have the most fun and winning was fun, man. That was it. When you're winning 20 games in a row, guess what? That's fucking fun. Yeah. Let's go <laughs> out drinking. And when you go out drinking and then still win 20 in a row, you just, you start to feel like you're above, I don't know. You start to feel like a fucking King kind of right. And that, that ego fucking fed, fed more, but eventually it had to run out kind of for me. And that that's kind of what happened. You know, like I said, I don't regret fucking anything, dude. That was the three years playing for Elmira and playing for Niagara. You're playing for something bigger than yourself, right? You're playing for your town, for your teammates, and then you're playing for your for your school. Like there was something awesome about that. You know, playing pro, I I just couldn't I couldn't get the same kind of couldn't couldn't put my heart into it quite the same way as as playing for your college, playing. No, for your but town. it's totally different. I've brought this up many times on the podcast. Is Pro is, is not college. It's not junior. It's not even European hockey. Like you never got over there to try it out, but like European hockey, if they signed you to be the goalie, you are the fucking goalie and it's on you. Yeah. I saw the stats one year. What was your goalie there? Ben Bounds or something. He played like 56 games out of 56 games one year or something. I'm like, no, and that's what the, like in the UK, you're the goalie. So yeah. And that, and it's totally different. And like, and it, and like, it's your net to lose. Like you want to lose it. It's up to you. And you could have thrived in the UK league, man. You could have, cause if they would, if it could have snowballed, if you start winning, And you're having fun with guys and you're having practices and you're having beers and you're, you're living life the way you want to live. You could have been the best goddamn UK goalie that ever happened. Yeah. What did you do in the summer when you would come home those years? Did you have to work? Like in a job? Uh, which summers? Like the summers (laughs) when you're, when you're in Europe. Like you, you um, there were some summers, the there were summer? some, there were some summers when I thought I was still an up and comer. I didn't work. And then there was a time where I realized that you, you may as well keep making money and train later in the day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at that part, if I could have, uh, you know, for me, the, the money became a, a big issue, right? Making 500 bucks a week for, for basically half the year. And I was like, this isn't a fucking making a living. And you well, see and that's, your other and friends are getting jobs and, and getting married. And, and I'm like, I need to get a I need to get a career and a job. And farming was right there. And uh, so that was my my kind of easy way out. If I, I could have got set up with like a good team. And but then the, the thing is, is you're still making 500 bucks a week. And then like you did you made the right decision and you did the right thing and you did what you should do. And I can't wait to be there to check it out. I can't like check out the ranch. Yeah, no, I literally can't wait to see the chicks and the, uh, the pigs. Oh, good. But well, I'm going to be by, uh, this week to pick up my hats. I got two snapbacks on reserve for me, right? Well, they are. Yeah. They have been sold out and they are up there on the shelf for you with Van Nye and that and on them. Um, I only, I, I was lucky enough to get paid by someone to drink beers with my friends in my shed. And I turned that into hats yep. and uh, people actually bought them. So maybe next time it'll be shirts and uh, right. Like you may as yeah. well see what happens. Yeah, buddy. I love it. Um, No, like I, I dude, I, I miss you. I miss our battles. I wish you could be here to play ping pong against me. 
Um, I haven't lost a game in a while. I did lose one last weekend, but I won the best two out of three. So that, so Holt can fuck off. Um, yeah. but, um, I'd like, I'd like to see you play defense because you weren't much of a spinner. You just kind of hold the paddle up and yeah. knock it back over like a goalie. I I'd was like all to see defense. More spin. My ping pong game was all defense. I had no forehand smash. I would just defense and I had a serve. Dad taught me. Dad went to Jamaica on this trip years, years ago, and he taught me this trick he learned to put ridiculous top spin on the serve. And it's actually an illegal serve, I think, in a real ping pong world you have to throw it up so it go it barely leaves the hand and that was my my, my game was beat him off the serve and play d and uh you no, know that always got me i would be like third fourth ranked at niagara there was two or three guys eggets is good but he was kind of a defense guy too but there was a couple guys who could actually hit the forehand winners oh it'd and, be a boring uh, game watching you and i guess play just it all- would yep yeah. just two guys who, who refused to lose and someone asked to but no, I understand. Um, no, like I, I really think uh, the reason I actually no, I'm not done yet. You got your, some more. Your slow pitch team. What's oh, it called? Fuck. The A's. <laughs> Who told you about this? I have a big network. Really? Yeah. So when I got done with uh, with the senior thing, um, I uh, started getting heavy into the slow pitch and uh you know so who, what are you are you're you let me guess actually no you're not a catcher you're you think slow you're pitch. a shortstop you're you're not a shortstop but no, you I'm think you are stop. i you was an outfielder i think i, I definitely 100 percent thought it was a shortstop but no i was an outfielder and uh so then i got back uh and i'm living at home for the first time for a uh, summer i think and i'm like all right i'm starting a slow pitch team so I first guy I signed was my dad. Uh, I grew up at the ballpark in the summer watching my dad play slow pitch. And uh, he was a pitcher. So I'm like, well, the first person I need is a pitcher. And he was a good pitcher. And at this point, he's probably 55 years old. But I'm like, all right, you're in. It wasn't like I asked him, do you want to be on my slow pitch team? I said, hey, you're on my team. And it's like, all right. And my buddy Clumper, he was a good slow pitch player. And uh, I had a couple other buddies. And then I had a cousin. Nate Van Herc and I Facebook message him one day, like he lives in Mitchell. Hey, I need some of your buddies to come out and, uh, and play slow pitch. And he's like, all right, well, I had no idea who he's going to bring out, but he brought out five or six actually pretty good athletes that played like junior D hockey Mitchell. And, uh, they played hardball growing up. And, uh, so that got to be my thing was I was the GM of a slow pitch team. And, uh, you know, it was awesome, dude. We, we went for on a 10 year run there and we won, I think six titles and uh, in 10 years. And uh, we had, we had, you know, we would lose like two or three games regular season and then we would choke in the playoffs or something. Right. But I would keep uh, comprehensive stats of everything too. Like singles, doubles, triples, home runs, average RBI walks. You're a little bit much eh, with that, the stats stuff. A little bit much with the stats. Yeah, that's fair. So I had 10 years of slow pitch stats in the, in the Excel sheet and, and uh, dude, I loved it. Right. But uh, ended up uh, folding that team and I played in Stratford for a year and then basically COVID hit and I haven't played uh, slow pitch in a few years now and trying to convert and figure out golf. But I started the year with a 115, trimmed that to a 102 and a hundred. So we're trending down. I think I'm going to get in the mid nineties pretty soon. Here. Well, I, I guess because this is a, uh, a global podcast and this is uh, the number one ranked podcast in the UK right now number one. is yeah. Number, number one, one, folks, one, baby. Number fucking one spit and chiclets. Um, is that uh, s- slow pitch is when you play baseball with a, like a piece of plywood laid on the floor two by and, three yeah and uh you got to pitch that and land it on there or else it's not a strike like an american it hits baseball the plate it's a strike yeah right it's got to hit the plate mm-hmm. up in the air and down right and, and in mitchell it, there's no limit the pitcher can throw it as high as he wants there's as no high limit. as he wants a mitchell. no limit yeah unlimited uh, did right. you start that yeah what's that did you start that? 
no, that, that was a long, around a long time. That's when my dad grew up playing. And then when you play in these small parks that have like 250 foot fences, that was a way to try to limit home runs because it's really fucking hard to hit a hit a ball that's 40 feet in the air coming down, like strike a lot of motherfuckers out with those, right? And uh, well, it's hard so to hit it. It's hard to hit it at the right angle. Yeah, exactly. Did you play some soul pitch or what? Well, I've played baseball. Yeah. I played Barrett with Barrett Agates once and he, he was a good soul pitch player. Jumping. Yeah, I yeah, I never played for the Bears in no. Concord. Oh yeah, the, the bad news bears, right? Yeah, no, they I they're pretty good. Yeah, I heard about them, but no, I always could play. I just never did. <laughs> You're more of a pitcher batter catcher guy. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm a pitcher batter so catcher guy and a, and a two time champion. Didn't you invent that game too? <laughs> Well, no, I didn't invent game. it. it was, I didn't you invented invent it. pitcher batter catcher. Fucking be honest, you know, like no, it was I honestly I think it, it was just us sitting around. They're like, Well, what are you guys are what are we doing? What are we having beers for? And they're like, Well, have you ever played this? And it wasn't me, it was not me. So it's like a spin-off of wiffle ball, basically, right? You know, like I it was, the, with it was the best best game I've ever played in my I life. I never fucking dabbled in that. Uh, Are you serious? We never I played took, together? I would have took you fucking yard. Rest assured. Don't worry about that. Um, You probably would have been up there acting like a peacock on the yeah. mound. You would have been me. Like, Actually, I wouldn't have taken you yard. You would have just put it right in my ass. You probably would have beamed me, and then I would have charged the mound. Yep. Yeah, melee ensues. Yeah. Well, but... Uh, I, I, I don't know what else we got. You got anything else for me yet? Um, but uh, I didn't, I, I did not bring this up. We do have two sponsors, folks. Stayinblue.ca. If you put in Wally 20 and you want to go hey, to the blue. We tried to do that the other day and it didn't work. The, really? Yeah. Shut we up. Were going, we were going there. Oh, dear. So, you so couldn't you put in the Wally 20? Yeah, I think so. Oh dear, Leah well, was doing it. I don't know. Maybe Leah fucked it up. So we'll, we'll... yeah, it might be Leah's fault. But I'll yeah. I'll, I'll I'll talk. Give to me you. a give us a phone number that we can call directly yeah. to someone who will uh, hook us. Yeah, up. well, Van Ayanan's had a lot of issues over the years with coaches and you know direction. So we'll get him in contact with PJ and see if he can sort something out here. But that'd be pretty cool if he booked something and I'd. Yeah, that'd be cool. And thank you again for the Bayfield Brewery for the uh, beers tonight. Been a slice. And uh, Nats, you got anything else for me? I literally, I'm sorry for being hard on you about uh, playing every game back, but I understand. It just, losing that next year was hard. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, we, we touched on that. It was uh, it was heartbreaking, right? But I, like I said, man, you got to give some credit to Sarnia. They were a good fucking team, and um, and don't forget about the legacy we left behind too, right? I think we, you know, it was an unbelievable run, you know, and uh, I don't think. Well, yeah, you want to go. When you think, no, I got to say this. I got to say this right now, is when you see how small the towns are around where I'm living. You see how small Stratford is. You see Walkerton. You see you see everywhere. You see Elmira. You see where we brought those people that all got full scholarships for hockey. Um, like they're not big towns. There's not a lot of hockey players around, but like that we are all the same age that me and you became rookies together on the Elmira Sugar Kings with Adam Hogg and Andrew Lackner and Ken Dunn. I, I really think that's fate. I don't, I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but ridiculous. how can, how can that many talented folks be yeah. the same age? It was meant to be right. And then, uh, you know what, if I don't get gas from Stratford, I, I guarantee I don't win a selling cup, right? And uh, because we would not have beat Elmira. I <laughs> they were cr- fucking good. We would have so, crushed uh, you. It all worked. It all worked <laughs> out, man. And uh, sometimes the stars align. I think that's, I think uh, maybe that's an officer line, but uh, the stars aligned for us there in Elmira. And it led to so much other 
uh, wild shit and, and great hockey and great times and the, and the friends I made uh, at Niagara, those are still my fucking best buddies. We, we it wasn't for COVID, we, you know, we get together five times a year, right? And uh, it's just uh, the journey that set me on, man, Almira. Oh my God, like uh, it's unbelievable. And they say, you know, ESK for life, man. It, that's that mean, it actually means something, right? And it's it was something else to uh, to experience that with you and and to go through those uh, those times that that molded us into 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 what was to come, right? So unbelievable times, and I still. I got all the scrapbooks. They ain't going anywhere. And in 40 years, I'm going to look back and I'm going to remember every fucking game just the same as I do now, dude. It was unbelievable times. Unbelievable times. No, uh, like, and yeah, like for us, I just want to say this once before I end this, is we battled for everything, but we were the fucking best that year. We were the best. We were good. We were good. We were good. The Abbots can time. fuck off and their Swedish elite league. <laughs> no, like seriously, like that last year, yourself and I, we were, it was tough. It was, it was tough to lose. It was tough to lose because yourself and I together were a package we were a team we were fucking the goalie and the score we were the yeah. fucking guys like I knew let's you fucking were. go you <laughs> want to fucking beat van nyan and walton yeah. let's fucking rock and roll you yeah. want to fucking take us down let's fucking go right we were ready to go and uh that was another thing that we learned too is consistency i think too especially that year was Every night we were ready to rock. It wasn't like, oh yeah, we didn't have it tonight. No, no, no. Fucking let's go. Game time. And uh, I remember my my mindset going into that year was uh, to pitch a shutout in the first period. Because if I could pitch a shutout in the first period, chances are we were up two or three nothing and shortly after. And that led to win, 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 <laughs> win, you know. So that was honestly my mindset to start the year was, you know what? Just have a good first period. I would, I would, I would approach uh, warm up like the game. I would take every shot warm. Do you remember we had the thing too where you would do a breakaway? The last thing we did at the end of warm up, you would loop out and come in for like a showtime breakaway, and everybody else in the ice would just get out of the way, and, and they'd like to watch it. Out. Yeah, and you know, what? and it wasn't like a showtime breakaway. It was, it was you fun. trying to fucking score, and me not trying to let you score and then that was it okay now we're ready to go now we're gonna shit kick you let's go (laughs) no (laughs) seriously like man you changed my life like you really did you you're you're downstairs battles you're uh you're everything we did it was everything literally everything we played it was ping pong it was shuffleboard it was euchre it didn't matter what the fuck it was either you won or i won and we knew exactly who won and we all left the night knowing who won and you know what there's not enough of that in life now like yeah you know what man you know what? That sums it up too. Like, you know what? In life in general, you don't always win, you know, but uh, for a moment there, we were winning, right? And life, life's hard. Sometimes things come at you that, you know, you don't always win, whether it's in business or in relationships or whatever this shit. Sometimes, man, you don't win, but yeah, fuck. It's more, it's so fun to win. And when you can pull it off in the team, the team effort that it took to, right? Like, and we were leaders, right? We know those kids were looking up to us that last year, especially they were looking up to us to fucking to lead the way. Right. And we, we loved it. We embraced it. We wanted to be the guys that, Hey, we're going to fucking follow us. Okay. Follow Wally and Natter and let's go fucking win this thing. Right. And God, it was, it was unbelievable. Scott, unbelievable. hold on. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I got it. It sounded bad for. Oh. Holy moly. Phones. I think.
technical difficulties. Apparently. This will be for the uh, let everybody know how much I don't edit anything. But yeah, no, my headset's not working, dude. We gotta shut her down. Yeah, can you can't hear me at all? Can you hear me now? Holy what? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, but it's gonna sound bad. But I, I threw the headset off. That's all right. You know, we're gonna we're gonna put a bow on this or what? I think so. Okay. Uh, okay. Hey, honestly. You explained a lot. I think you're the biggest dandy ever played with. And I think yourself and I playing together made me who I am. It made me the player I am. Um, it didn't. When you would not accept second place and Agates wouldn't, it made me accept not that too. And we battled. Like it was, it was like the two of us looked at each other and it was like, you got your side, I got my side. Let's fucking go. Right. It was it was win or die, man. You know, like we were every game from basically that playoff run on, every game was every fucking game we wanted to win and 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 it was just we couldn't turn it off it wasn't something you just like oh you know maybe we should no it was fucking crank to 100 win this fucking game and then whatever we do after we're gonna fucking do that to 100 too and if we play video games or ping pong during the week we're doing that 100 fucking 10 percent and it just set this mentality that you know fucking win at win or or fucking you know what are you? Off. What are you doing? You're fucking yeah. Win or fuck off. You know that was kind of the thing, and and uh, God, it was fun. God, it was fun, man. And uh, you know, I I uh, you know you were you were one of the funnest players ever to watch, especially that last year. Just uh, you were you were the funnest goal scorer ever to watch. Uh, one of the only players I would say you and Bentavolio were were similar in a lot of ways that. Uh, you know, the speed and, uh, and, and, but most of all too, the love of the game, right? You don't play 10 years pro if you don't love it. And, uh, you loved the game, you loved scoring, you loved winning. And, uh, you know, I, I was proud to say that I fucking played with Brent Walton and, uh, and the damage you did, man, it was, it was fun to watch. And I was just glad I was in the right place, at the right time to be with the 83s from Elmira and uh and i and i just tried to fucking not let you guys down and, and help out along the way and and try to fuck it, uh lead you to, to where we all had to get right and man it, it was awesome thanks man thanks for having me on no dude it was honestly i kept you on um or i wait made you wait till the 50th episode because I guess most mainly because of what you mean to me. Um, if when you're a player, like if you don't win, you don't get to the next step. You don't get to the next level. Exactly. Having yeah. a goalie that could fucking play in Elmira um, changed everything. Like, having you on that team and like it takes a long time to sit back and look at that and go well if we don't have him none of this happens yeah it was it was a it was another weapon in the arsenal kind of you know like uh, to have a goalie and i was i was a weapon about, at that time right i was competitive i was pretty big i could play the puck so I was like a weapon in that. Sometimes that weapon would misfire and you get the, you know, the, the fucking the mental breakdowns. But at the same time, I was, I knew I was the weapon and I, that's what I wanted to be. Right. I, and it, like you said about you win to get to the next level, that was always what drove me. And uh, I figured if all, if I win enough, they got to take me. They don't at all. That's not the right mindset to have. I wouldn't recommend that, but 
that was my mindset was if I win, they got to fucking let me into college hockey. They have to. And I won as much as I could and just barely got there. Right. And, uh, and it was, I guess the same thing in Niagara. If I, if I win, they got to play me, they got to play me. And, and maybe you're playing against uh, the best players, you know, in not the world, but, pretty much like and i'm like if i can win here they gotta fucking take me pro right so that was always what drove me to get to the next level right and i can remember my dad too talking to kevin block after after he signed me and my dad said to him and i was sitting in the kitchen i could hear him he said well he's found a way to win at every other level and uh you know what i think he'll probably find a way to win at this level too this is before I never played a game of college hockey, right? So but he, I, you, I was junior B hockey. So you're I real I'm really upset my headset's not working. Um that I can hear you fine. No, so the thing is is that uh when your dad's like he's gonna know you, like he's gonna know you don't like losing, and he's oh, gonna yeah. know you figure it out like yeah. losing is a thing you can figure out, like you can change it you don't have to lose yeah no it's true right and uh for me too losing losing was such a low you know like it got to the point where winning was just winning just kept me here but the losing would fucking yeah die. and but you know what maybe the losing was what fuck either you do two things when you lose you either give up or you say fuck this that's it. Those are the two options you have when you lose. You give up or you say, fuck this, and you come back harder. And uh, that was what we did that first year is we, we found a way to say, fuck you, and come back, right? And when you do enough times, you start to think, you, you know, be beaten. And all it takes is, is, to, uh, is to say kind of uh, at some point you got to say, fuck you, I'm not losing. And and just kind of you got to put your foot down and be like. Oh, well, we yes. did that. The the we all did that. It was Agates. It was Fearman. It was Fisher. It was you. It was me. It was it was everybody. Everybody that was on that Zoom call. Every single guy. When there was a time we were like, let's do this. Let's. You know what? That team too was just loaded with with heart, with character with competitive motherfuckers and uh and guys that just they wanted to win so bad and uh and they were and we were so experienced and old yet that still we had the young guns so it's just a perfect fucking blend you know and and that next team uh through no fault of our own the next year we faced zero adversity, you know, like we, like I said, we fucking cruised. Wild. We lost six games from September to April. And then, uh, and then you know, we, we finally ran into a team that was at our level, right? Like we could have probably played Sarnia uh, in a best of 15 and it was going to 15. Like we finally met a team that was like, you know what, this team's good. But the, the teams we played along the way, we're no match, man. They were no yeah, match. They right? so, and that wasn't our fault. You know, the year before, fuck those, all those teams were at our level. Every team we played and we found a way. So when you find a way, you know, like it tested us, you pass the test, you move up. But we were not tested by Owen Sound and Listowel and Stratford that year, you know. So, you know, it, you, what can you do? Sorry we didn't face any adversity. We shit can the people that showed up to play us. And then, you know, you run into a team that's – they actually, I think Sarnia, that was – they were down 3-1 to somebody, came back and beat them. So, you know, they had faced the adversity. They had beat it. So when they saw – like, all right, this is a big test. But, uh, you know, they you, you flip a coin in game seven, man. That's the only game seven I ever played. And, uh, you know, I lay in bed thinking about it. Uh, but uh, what can you do, right? I wish I – you know what, tonight I'm going to lay in bed and think about the legacy we left behind – and the three, four selling cups that came later because we fucking laid the groundwork for this is how the Elmira Sure Kings roll. We fucking win selling cups, right? So that's, Absolutely. What, I, that's what I try to take out of it. And, uh, you know, you can't go back and change it anyway. So you might as well put a positive spin on it. No, I, I totally agree, man. Like between yourself and I, we did everything we possibly could in Elmira to be the champions that year. It was the 
one of the hardest days of my life was losing that game. You know, it was, but, it was tough, man. But it was also, it was over, man. We all had our scullies and it was like, well, let's go on to the next uh, challenge, right? And uh, yep. So and we know. did that. We did that with flying colors too. Oh, and dude, that was what? an unbelievable journey as well. I'm pretty sure it says 11. Yeah, it's late. So here we go. This has been another uh, episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Natan and Wally.